lot of people have this like view of me like I'm this like troublesome person. Yeah. But if you bring trouble to my doorstep, I will give you time stand. But you know? Sandra, what is it about you that has made the first man go? <laughs> Who be Franklin go? You see what I'm Bro, saying? Hair, go. But she what said is that... it about you? you what did you did? So you said I wasn't cooking for him. We had a chef. So I don't understand how he said I needed to be in the kitchen directing the chef to cook. Oh. And then like, I was like, we already have a timetable. You know Traf- all those things. He, <laughs> 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 he said I, I I was throwing pillows on the floor. You know, and I wasn't cleaning the house, that I needed to dust out the house. And we had a house boy, so I don't understand how I needed to, a whole seal and businesswoman has to be clean a whole house, you know, mm. when they already have. Your first marriage that lasted seven years and the second one and the third one. Royal hair, was it the second one? Yes. Ubi Franklin, what number was he? Um, <laughs> Some men, especially Nigerian men, hmm. they know how to hide their character. They do. They are real character. Yes, and most of them are narcissists. You, if, if you're in a marriage or you're in a marriage and uh, it's toxic, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Mm. And it's going to affect your mental state. So the best thing for you to do is to leave. And a lot of women cannot leave because they're dependent on their husband. Mm. They don't wow. have anything going on for themselves. Mm. They don't have nothing. And some of these men do not let their wife do anything because they want to be in control. Mm. Welcome to the Honest Bunch Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we're super grateful. Every Monday at 6 p.m., you're here. We curate great content. You enjoy this content. You give us information and evidence. They declare. Now, information is, you know, available. Spotify says 12,000 of you this year alone will carry the Honest Bunch Podcast for head. Eh? We appreciate you that. We cannot thank you no, enough. No, no, you didn't say it well. Like, as number one. As number one, yes. As Ooh, number one. Yeah. yeah. So, we, we create content for over two hours and every Monday and the rest of the week you spend your time enjoying this. We're really very grateful. By the way, tell I them we're cry. number one in Africa, innit? I wish I could cry. I wish I could cry. <laughs> the place where we do. <laughs> no problem. Don't like. cry, don't cry. Don't, don't cry. cry. Don't <laughs> cry. <laughs> Give me my catch. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so, we're really very grateful. And it is because of your support that we enjoy this attention. And, you know, a lot of people keep coming every Monday. Thank you so much. Let me just delve straight into the introduction of the usual suspects and somebody special in our midst. And I'm going to begin with the special person in our midst. She's a journalist with so many years of experience. Mm-hmm. She has voice like Nightingale. The hey! voice would <laughs> ring me. And you would enjoy that today. Super mm. intelligent, super smart, mm. and really very, very beautiful. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, BB! Yo, those accolades, thank you. Yes, <laughs> you deserve it. Even me, I said, okay, yes. I'm an angel. You deserve it, yes, angel. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mm. black beauty, mm. hazel eyes, mm. inside mm. coconut mm. skin. Mm. She's mm-hmm. drop dead gorgeous delectable, mm. super intelligent, and is capable of causing traffic mm. on the Todd Milan Bridge on public holiday. Okay. Our Gen Z body, a.k.a. Oh, Gen Z Pro Max. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, what she says, yes. Everybody says, stop, and they agree with her. Daisy, go! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she. I can't even say the stop very well. Stop! <laughs> oh, she. nice one. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, our eldest brother, Mm. The first born of the Honest Sponge <laughs> podcast. Mm. The Igbo will call him Okpara. He's the salt. <laughs> In the course of building the Honest Sponge podcast, this man has gone through a lot. <laughs> but he still stands strong. Mm. He will never be minus. Ladies and gentlemen, man of enchanting physique, no many degrees and characters. No, no, I was I didn't say good like this. <laughs> you see, not only me, I was about to say that I know what's in this thing. <laughs> Understandably, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ezugu Chukudi. Six foot tall, tall chocolate, chocolate puppy, puppy, chocolate dripping. I want to be a flat tummy loading. No loading. I'll get there. I'll get there. I'm working hard. I'll get there. No, so, no, no, no. Let, let's not let our guest is the one that will give us. Mm-hmm. You know, today. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, our guest is a public figure mm. that needs no introduction in Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> but interestingly, 
more is known about her social life than her business acumen and scholarly disposition. Simple. Mm. That is why we're on the Honest Bunch podcast where we give people their flowers when they can still spell them. This woman, Sabi Book, die. <laughs> she's a, she Sabi Book, die. In fact, under the age of 20, she was working as a senior... I cannot talk and finish. Bank of... No Bank of America now. Mm -hmm. Under the age of 20, many person they work for Bank of America and not be just saying they work there, but if they work in senior capacity, if they give advice mm -hmm. and then they use and well and now why the company, they prosper. And she had chains of businesses, still does. Till today, whether now fret and forwarding, whether now logistics, whether now food, whether now beauty, whether now household, a hand the inside, whether now investment. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this alumna of the <laughs> University of Massachusetts, mm, oh, Sandra right. Ivoma Ihua. <laughs> Pronounce Massachusetts right. Ah. Ah, people have problems. Oh, people have problems. Yeah, ah. pronouncing that. This English well. that I speak. <laughs> <laughs> so people, hey, people don't know that I go to school. Oh. Don't use my face and judge my spoken English. Kamakazi. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that name nearly put me for problem. But well, you're most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank We're you. super grateful. Sure. Now, Every time I say that, and I dare say that they beat my chest, they talk, you're definitely going to learn from every episode. And this one, you go learn. Now, we're discussing second chances and bouncing back from, you know, tragic situations. Now, when we talk about second chances, everybody knows, okay, when you try the first time and you don't succeed, you know, trying again. Then when you talk about tragedy, you're looking at an incident that has caused, you know, distress, pain, anguish. You feel some type of way about it. But today... You would learn that irrespective of your situation, you can bounce back because you are special. So let me just, I think a very good way to start is, you know, there's this saying that some people feel it's some sort of um, consolation when you look at a situation. Whether or not you be the good person or not you be the bad person, they say every disappointment is a blessing. Some people feel that that statement in itself is you consoling yourself irrespective of whatever caused that disappointment or that situation. I'd like first to just think, just understand what we all feel about this particular statement. When they say every disappointment is a blessing, do you agree with that? That every disappointment is a blessing or you feel say no? When did it happen? It happened because of certain things and it will not be blessing. I think why they say every disappointment is a blessing is, well, I'm going to go to the religious part yeah, of it. Yeah, biblical. Biblical Preach part daddy. And <laughs> go <deeper. laughs> I'm going to go there. Because um, the Bible says that, if we're going back the Bible, the Bible says that God knows the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Knows everything that's going to happen even before it happens. And the Bible also says that God's plan for us is of good and not of evil for us to have an expected end, which means he knows everything that is going to have happen even before it happens. If person slap you or fire burn your house, God knows beforehand that your fire is going to your house is going to catch a fire. And if he still allowed it to happen, then it's for good. Then it's for reason. Now the thing is why we sometimes don't see past through these things because we don't see beyond our noses. Now just waiting with the sea. That waiting there in front of us. That, I mean, it's just what we think that we see. Which is why they say, for those that understand, they tell you that every disappointment is a blessing. There are some times that you might want to go for an event. I don't go burn your cloth. Mm -hmm. Or something is going to happen. Or your cloth go tear. All of a sudden, you won't come up for house, your cloth tear. And they say, you know what? Baba, I know they even go this event. And then you end up on the, finding out that maybe one tragic situation happened for that event or on the way to that event. Before you noting that everybody will begin to say, ah, this disappointment is a blessing. I mean, for it to get to the point where it's now a saying that every disappointment is a blessing, I dare say that that's what it is. Mm. Yeah. That's Biblically. what I think. Biblically. 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 Because some people, yeah. know, some people don't agree yes. with, you know, that Oscar. written Oscar. aspect. Oscar. Okay, interesting, interesting. I think it's a very good way to start because uh, to a considerable degree, it shows that, you know, we admit that certain things happen. And when these things happen, the most important thing is to move on. Absolutely. But, but before I would ask the next question, you wanted to say something. Baby. I wanted to say that I totally agree with Nedu because when you look at the universe and you really believe that everything that happens is working in your favor, you realize that in the end, like I can't look back on a situation that has happened 
and thought, okay, it disappointed me at the time. But after, in hindsight, I realized that actually it was supposed to happen that way because I was supposed to maybe get another opportunity that maybe was even better for me. So I think it's all about the outlook that you have on life. If you have a positive outlook, an optimistic outlook, then that mindset will kind of follow you through and you realize that things will end up being better. Mm. So if something doesn't work out the way you wanted it to, don't worry because chances are it work out even better. But you have to believe it. It all comes from what you believe because mm. it's what you believe that you will in turn, like, um, attract. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I think, yeah. Very yeah. true. Very true. Interesting. Uh, our guests, <laughs> our guests there, you know, I, I mentioned that, you know, more is known about your social life than your scholarly disposition mm. and the business acumen. I'm very certain that some people might maybe Google today. You know, the thing with Google is it throws up, you know, searches. Mm. And when it does, if you go through page one to ten, make you know, see what you define. Now, things when they say maybe trend, <laughs> Now everybody go know. Nobody knows certain aspects of, you know, a person. And today might be a lesson for some people to say, oh, so this woman, you know, now a successful business person, he go University of Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> talk something. Uh, talk. Sorry, no vex, mm. no vex. I'm so sorry, forgive mm. me. An example of every disappointment is a blessing. I was in Abuja. I was working as a stockbroker. I worked at a stockbroker for three years. Then while I was working there, I went to um, market to somebody with an insur that works for an insurance company. So while I was marketing for the guy, the guy loved the way I, I marketed the insurance, I mean, the stocks to him. I was like, no, you have to come work for me. Note, what I was earning then was 34,000 naira that time. And then what he was paying his staff, the least was 320,000 naira as at then. So when I hear the money, is in my bar popcorn. I was like, no, I gonna what? I gonna work for you. He now said, okay, come back and come and do interview. When I went there for interview, Baba lawyers did there. Those we get two degrees did there. Those we get masters did there. But for some reason, I passed the interview, the test. I, I was the only one that they picked. I was living in Abuja, so I was supposed to move to Kaduna, which is where I grew up where my parents are to work. Now I now needed to now resign. Where I was working. Note, they never give me appointment letter. And I now come and work, and I now come and resign for the stockbroking company. Come move, go Kaduna. As I move, go Kaduna, they say, okay, they don't send the test results to Lagos that those ones are going to come up with the, the employment letter and everything that should just wait. But before then, instead of me just waiting at home, that should just resume with them and start marketing. But by the first week I started doing with them, I joined one girl they called Joke. I started, you know, going marketing with, I joined her marketing motto. The first place I went to market, I insured 10 trucks. My wow, 10 fine, trucks. 10 trucks. 10, 10 full tanker. I insured 10 trucks. Now, the 10 trucks were going insured, they paid for only two. They now said, in two weeks, they are going to pay for the remaining balance. As I go back <laughs> office, they nearly carry me for head. They were like, wow, on your first week, you, you will never even collect you employment, never letter. Complain <laughs> employment letter. This is mad. Mm. To me, fire can't catch four of their trucks that same week. Mm. So the company now now had to pay premium to them. I be able to call that. She be mm, premium, no matter yeah, Now yeah. pay, pay. To, so because of that thing, what happened? Then I say, this person that brought this job, you know what? Forget about it. Mm. That was where he ended. Fast forward to as I don't come come out there, I go back house searching for work. Somebody now called me. How about you come to Lagos? You've got a good voice. You should work on radio. That was how Anna enter night boss. I came to Lagos. The rest is history. Mm. So you see, if that had worked out, mm -hmm. your your story, if you know, mm. interesting. So I was going to direct this question to you, and it's because most times when when we go through a situation, we now look back and say, oh. So now me go through all these things mm. and now me don't overcome them. Mm -hmm. Now, I said something about your social life yeah. and what is available to the public, not some other things that people know. Mm. Sometimes in your own quiet time, when you think about your experience so far, because experience plenty, you even to say you won back PhD before the age of 40. Yes. <laughs> when you look back at your at your life experience, you know, how do you what do you think about yourself? Or your situation, or no, okay, let me go back. How did you do when you were dealing with such situations? How did you look towards the future? 
I would say, well, it's actually uh, at that time, it's you, you, I was actually like, oh my God, like, where, like, how will I move on from this? It was really hard for me. Uh, I was like, you know what? Like, it's what it is, it's life. You know, I have to pick up the pieces and uh, keep it moving. And I'm really grateful because, you know, if I wasn't still in that situation, I don't think I'll be accomplished what I have actually accomplished. You know, because moving in that situation, being in that situation, especially with my business, I only had like two locations. But right now I have over 10 locations. Wow. Yes. So that focus, I actually channeled my energy mm. towards my business. That's what I do. Every time I'm hurt, I channel, it, I channel it towards my business and what I want to get done, my goals and everything. So that's pretty much what, what it is. So yeah. For, for people who maybe do not understand, you know, me, I never use my mouth talk. Am. You also never use your mouth talk. Am. We have said situation, situations. Not be say she fall down. Not be say person push her, she fall down. Or then tear her clothes. She Maybe she the eye on the clothes born. We're discussing, and in detail now, we're discussing, you know, getting married to somebody you believe you want to spend the rest of your life with and dealing with a lot and it not working out. And then you bouncing back from and it. And then bouncing back from it. Let's even talk about, let's talk about the first situation, you know, um, meeting somebody you believe, okay, this person understands my goals and this person is going to give me all the support to become the best that I want to be. Let's spend the rest of our lives together. You look back, maybe you don't even cut off some friends, mm. some friendship because, yeah. you know, you're now with the love of your life and you want to move on. What happened, what, what, plays, what plays in one's mind at that situation? Well... <sighs> I had a lot of, uh, before I got into, uh, before I got married, I had a lot of, uh, um, you know, I had a, a lot of discussion, you know, with the person I was with at that time, um, what we wanted to do and what, uh, what our goals were. You know, we had a lot of plans, but um, <laughs> when the whole thing, you know, scattered and I'm like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, you know, and in, in a society like Nigeria, you know, being that I was, in a previous uh, relationship and that did not go well and all that stuff. They tend to like, you know, um, blame the woman and say, ah, there must be something wrong with her. Mm. Uh -uh. After mm. this one, this one, you know, you know, all of that was just keep going on in my head. At the time I was actually um, uh, depressed at one point. Yes. When I was actually um, pregnant, I was actually depressed and I was like, oh my God, I didn't want to, I didn't even want to do anything. I had to be strong because a lot of people like looked up to me. They were looking up to me and um, I didn't even know what to do. But I, I said, Sandra, get yourself back up. You know, mm. you're, you're who you are. You know, you know who you are. You know, you know what you can do, you know. And that's how I was able to get myself out of it. It was really tough. It was mm. very, very tough. But I had to get myself out of that situation. Your first marriage, was it to, who was, who was the first marriage to? Um, uh, American. It was American guy i have known him for years mm -hmm. yeah so we've been we are married for like seven years seven mm -hmm. years seven, wow, seven years yes you know it's really crazy what they say about you know you getting to find out <laughs> things about people even if you have known them all your life you said yeah. you're, you're known him for years mm -hmm. married for seven years and then one day you wake up and you're like ah now this same person when i know mm -hmm. naim do you think anything is responsible for that switch or is it that people are so in love or they are so vested in a situation that they overlook or do not see certain things? Yes, I believe, um, you know, I would say like people change, you mm. know, especially when they get into a situation, they do change. And, um, you know, people like, did you see the red flags? Mm. You know, when a woman is in love, you just, you know, you just don't see those flags, you know, even though they tell you, you know. That's not good for you, but you know when a woman is in love and you I know want to see, be... I'm blind. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, you know, until see, they enter. Do you think that until that's you... it? Do you feel like we can ignore red flags? Because obviously, before you marry somebody, that's a huge decision to make. Hmm. I don't know about anybody else, but I will think it through. I think it's more of a thing where maybe as the marriage progresses, you do something that they don't like, they hold it. Maybe they don't tell you. They do something that you don't like. You hold it. You don't tell them. Before you know it, the resentment continuously builds. Mm -hmm. And that resentment then ch in turn changes how you guys interact with each other, which then in turn leads to like a divide and a deeper separation. I think that's what happens. I think that the person that you still loved, like the person that you fell in love with is still there. But the circumstances, because the relationship has now deepened, that has changed. 
Mm. Do you feel like that could be what happened with you and the first or even second marriage? Um, my first one was actually um, we're good. We're actually best of friends up to now. So that was a decision I made to walk out of the marriage. Mm. Um, but the second one was more like a shock to me. So it was, you know, even though I saw some of the red flags, um, uh, I thought I could handle it, mm. you know, mm. I thought I could handle it. But, mm. uh, you know, getting to it, into the marriage became worse. You know, so, uh, but I just feel some people, some men, especially Nigerian men, hmm. they know how to hide their character. Oh, yeah. They do. Their character. Yes. And most of them are narcissists. Mm. Yes. They don't like to I would say 85%. Mm. Uh-uh. Let me just be like... 85%, 85 of Nigerian men. She didn't, and she didn't say all. She said 85%. No, but 85 is a lot. 85 is a lot. Let me just say, let me clarify. Some Nigerian men. Okay, better. Some Nigerian men. Yes. A narcissist. A narcissist. And they don't, yes. most of them, they don't know this. They don't know that yes, they're they don't narcissists. Know it. Yes. They believe that, okay, because of the way they grew up or because of the way they've seen their parents growing up, this is how their father acted towards oh, them. Yeah. So this yeah. is the right thing. They don't try to unlearn to relearn. Yeah. Yes. They just do whatever they grew up with and they don't get what it. What is it about you that is attracting you to narcissistic men? Na, na, <laughs> na, 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 okay, mm. narcissistic mm. men, actually, get me? they pick their victims. Mm. You know, mm. for instance, they pick a woman where they feel like she's strong and she has a little bit of maybe, um, maybe a little bit of baggages with her, you know, and mm. they feel like, like for me, like I say, like I have the situation with my ex, right? And it's all over social media, right? And with this marriage now, like I entered and even though I, there's a lot of things that happen, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to leave. So people don't talk about, mm. you know, and say it's my fault. Cycles. Mm. Yes, exactly. So they kind of like hold on to that. Like she will never want to leave because people are going to blame her. This is her second time. This is mm. her third time, you know. I know that's interesting because I think that she just stumbled onto like a very, very big point. There is such a stigma attached mm. to women in particular especially when it comes to walking out of a marriage that doesn't necessarily serve them. Because if a man decides to leave a marriage, when a divorce happens, it's a man and a woman that decide to divorce, right? Mm -hmm. The man leaves and walks away relatively unscathed, but the woman is the one that somehow mm -hmm. looks like the villain. So I'd like to know why is that? Why is it that in Nigeria, our society tends to look at the woman as the bad guy? You know, you know, you know, you know why I think that is, is because we have, a, I, I will say this, we we'll have a society, I, I stand corrected. We we'll have a society that don't really, really respect women that much. I'll be honest with you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you for saying yes. it. Cause I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> not, I, I stand corrected. I might be wrong. Yeah, no. I, no, you sometimes <laughs> I see how some men treat women. It, hmm. it bleeds my heart. Do you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I think these women allow these men to treat them that way. I'll tell you why. Now, it get, I get pissed off when I hear women say, oh, we are trying to be equal with men. No, you can never be equal with a man. Yes. You know why I think you can never be equal with a man? You're actually higher than a man. Mm, a wise I man. Say that. I'm serious. You, a woman so is higher power. than a man. Yeah. You're bringing yourself down. Let's break it down. Mm -hmm. Don't be angry. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you don't even know now. A man is a man, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A man is the head of the family. Yep. If man, if you do, if as a baby day here now, baby, now you now say, baby, go go and help Nidu to sort something out. If she's coming to help me to sort something out, do, can I do that thing she's coming to help me? No. She's coming to help me sort that thing out and to make me a better person. Mm -hmm. God said a woman is a helpmate to a man. Why do you think they say that behind every successful man, there is a woman? Mm. So when you bring yourself down... Some people now say that it's not, it's not beside, mm. not behind you. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the problem with that. That's what, that's what I'm and saying. Women men don't like to like actually you know, acknowledge as the woman that's Baba, woman, it. they help yes. you. See, let's... Baba, leave them. Whether so, you like it or not. A woman helps you make you better. Yes. Whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. Baba, you when you my blood brother. See my brother here. Not only native, native, every day, 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 every day
my guy changed. He started looking good. He started dressing well. A woman brings the truth is a woman brings the best of you outside. That thing where you not they see. Baba, you know when woman hear you, you they mad. You go and chuck anybody knife. You yes. don't come back from. You don't come back. Maybe your girlfriend sees you and looks at you. Ow, oh dogumoke, bado. You see the way where you lay your girlfriend and wife take the helam. He got a girl go tell hey you like this, Baba. You want the girlfriend and wife? Sorry, sorry. I take it won't have the In wife, this in wife for now. Wait, take the helam for video. One way they see you, Baba. If not me, I go one blow anybody in the cross. Is it what you say? So I think women bring themselves down to wanting to be equals to a man. You're not. You are higher than a man. Yes, physically, women are the weaker vessel. But emotionally, mm. y'all are the greater vessel and the men are the weaker. Which one control which one? Does emotions control physicality or does physicality control emotions? Mm. So always wanting to bring yourself down and say, I, when you bring yourself down and making a man look like you're eating from his hand, you have cheapened yourself. Mm, true, true. I say something. I say something. Relationships are two. A, a girl that... It, the, the love from a lo, what love means to a girl that has uh, that has her job is making money is different from what love means to a girl that does not have money. Mm-hmm. A girl that does not have money that is not working, love to her is when the man is giving her money left, right, and center. Take you to Bahamas. Take you to. It's this very one. caring. It's very caring. Oh my God! He's spoiling me. Poverty <laughs> alleviation. But, poverty. <laughs> but to a girl that has what she's doing. That's got money. Love to her is time. Yep. Sacrifice. Uh, what, and guess what? Which one is stronger? The one that has money. What love is to the one that has money is what love is that that is what that, that love is what can keep a relationship. So you that is just collecting. For you, collect collecting is, is love. The guy will get to a point where he's tired. Tired, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. And you become a parasite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you coll- being the one that is always collecting, you're chipping yourself as a woman. So, um, B made a very important point about society and how people perceive such situations. Is it because, or do you think that maybe because of our warped um, perception of marriage, mm. that is what makes it difficult for people to wake up one day and say, I must tell myself the truth. This is not working. This is not what I signed up for. Or this mm. is not what I want. And so I cannot deal with this. Or you think people will just look at it and say, ah, they say, now nah, school, when person know they graduate from, let's just continue to patch and move it together. It's definitely going to be better. It's my cross that I have to carry. I hate that no, I, I believe, like, um, if it's not working, it's not working. Just, you know, keep it moving. Um, because um, you can, if you... If, if you're in a marriage or you're in a marriage and uh, it's toxic, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Mm-hmm. And it's going to affect your mental state. So the best thing for you to do is to leave. And a lot of women cannot leave because they're dependent on their husband. Mm-hmm. They don't wow. have anything going on for themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't have nothing. And some of these men do not let their wife do anything because they want to be in control. Mm-hmm. And that's financial abuse. Mm-hmm. So I always encourage women to actually get something mm-hmm. doing, even mm-hmm. if it's little. So when that time comes and like, you know, um, I can't deal with this anymore. This man is abusing me and this is uh, really getting to me mentally. Then she can make that step to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do to get out of my marriage. You know, because getting out is hard. It's very, very hard. You will need money to get out hmm. because you have to go get a place mm-hmm. for yourself. Because mm-hmm. I remember when I was coming back to the, coming back to Nigeria, when I gave birth in, um, in the US and I was actually going to, come back, I had to start looking for a house, you know, because I left my, where I was before, where I got married straight to the US. So when I was coming back, I had to get a place because we're no longer together. together. So that is hard. So, you know, there's a lot of women in my shoes, like I want to move out, but I don't have money Mm -hmm. to move out. So that's why I always tell uh, women that get, even if it's little stuff, it will always grow, Mm -hmm. you know, get something doing. You don't even need to, um, you know, rely on your husband or any man to get it going because one day, you know, you need it and you come in, it's going to come in handy. Yeah. What, what made, sorry, honey, what mm-hmm. made you leave your first marriage? 
Um, actually, it's a. <laughs> and, and at what point? What, what made you leave? Mm -hmm. And at what point did you? When did this? When did you? The reason that you left. Mm -hmm. When did you start noticing that? And at what point did you get that you said, Do "You know what? I've had enough. I'm out." Um, actually, my deal breaker is cheating. I when I'm in a, in a like in a relationship, I focus on one person. And uh, if I feel like the other person is not, and after talking, 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 and it's not, you know, going the way I want it to go, or there's no improvement, and it's messing oh, sorry, up. So by even talking, talking, you are even giving them long group. Yes. Like I know, yes. I know you are doing this thing, but stop it. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. So you have conversations with the person. Yes. And then I always, I'm a very outspoken person. I don't keep anything in my mind. Mm -hmm. I speak as it is, and uh, you know, you take it as it is. And if I keep talking and you're not, you know, I don't see any changes. I just, you know, work out. That's what I do. And um, at that point, it was a lot. So I was like, you know what, I can't. I can't do this anymore. So right. I just decided to walk away. Yeah, ask a question. You mentioned that in your second marriage, um, you your second marriage you had, that's when you went to America to have your child. Mm -hmm. And when you came back, you couldn't go back to your husband's mm -hmm. house, correct? Yes. So that means that the separation happened, the you know before the divide happened as you were pregnant? Yes, as I was pregnant. I was like six months pregnant, six, seven wow. months pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And how soon back did you, or how soon after the pregnancy did you come back to Nigeria? Um, I would say like four months. I, I spent four months in the U.S. So I I left the house January, mm -hmm. then I went back to the U.S. in February. Then I came back July. June. I'm, go July, I'm yeah. going to ask this question. Let me just hit it the way it is. Um, Your first marriage that lasted seven years. And the second one, and the third one. No, I wasn't married three sorry, times. Sorry, the, 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 the yeah. second one. Um, royal hair, was it the second one? Yes. Ubi Franklin, what number was he? Um, <laughs> Ubi was um actually is was we're in a relationship at that time. So you were not married with. No, him. I wasn't married. And to then him. you had a Ooh. child for him. Yes. Mm. So when when. Because the one, I, I didn't know you personally. This is my first time of meeting you. Everything I know about you is online. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, like Cosmo Matera rightly said at the beginning, a lot of people are going to learn on this episode to know how to come out from an abusive marriage or an abusive relationship and not to have the fear to still stay there while you're dying. Now, you were married to um, the royal hair guy. When you were dating him, how long did you date for? Um, we dated for like, so we met in April. Um, so I would say we dated for like three months. Three months? Yeah, about three months, two, three months. Was he before Ubi Franklin or after? After. After Ubi Franklin. Now I'll come back to Ubi Franklin. Ubi Franklin, funny, is my friend. Now the first, the, the, how, what, what made you, what was it that you saw about royal hair that made you believe this guy, I'm going to get married to him. He's the person for me to get married to. And I mean, you you said something earlier that there were you saw red flags, mm. but you still went ahead with it. Yes, I did. Um, I, I would say um, whatever he was selling, I bought it. You willingly bought it? Yeah, <laughs> I bought it. You know, whatever he was selling to me, I bought it. Why do you think that is? Uh, because I, I felt like it was alignment with what I believed in. Um, I didn't know because he was following me for years. I didn't have an idea. Like mm. he was following me for years. So I think probably On he Instagram. started me. Yes. Mm. So I didn't know like probably he started me. You know, I was into my business and stuff. And so with, with him and him is into business and stuff. So I said, okay, this could be, a, you know, a great match. We could do things a lot together. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple coming together and building like kind of like a power couple. Because that's what mm -hmm. I really wanted for my life. You right. know, but it didn't work that out that way. So. It means that what led you into that relationship was a need that you needed to meet. Um, not, not particularly. Oh, it um, was a need. Oh, it was because you said, like, like I said, he was selling something to me, which is and what I bought you it. Needed. Yes. Now let let me say something. Mm -hmm. I say this: the worst reasons you should get into a relationship as a woman is when you have a need. 
What do I mean? If you have emotional need, financial need, psychological need, sexual need or whatever, that's the worst reasons to get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. If you have those needs, you should not get into a relationship. And also, if you cannot stay alone, don't get into a relationship. Yeah. Now, those needs, if you have a financial need and you want to get into a relationship, I want to build this mansion. I want. To, I mean, it's not a bad thing to want to build those things, to, 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 to want to build an empire. The truth is, if you get financial need, I, I stand corrected. You get into those relationships because of that need. Person we get that, we want meet that need for you. Now, what do you want to give you? Now, you go give you. Not be waiting you want. But I didn't ask for it. He but you wanted it. it. No, he presented it. And he said, a woman like myself, like with kids, like Nigeria, I just moved into Nigeria, like at, at that time. He said, people are not going to respect me, that I need to be, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm supposed to have like a, like a husband or something and people respect me in the society. Hmm. You know, like I said, what he was selling, I bought it. So I talked so about it. Re- okay. So basically, preyed on your insecurities. Exactly. Probably, Which is literally yes. narcissism 101. Yes. So it's like, how to spot a narcissist? He's pointing out but things that you are insecure about. Nig- Nigerian men are charming. No, but understand what I'm saying. I'm quite charming in here. I live charming in this thing. But understand what I'm saying, Sandra. You didn't do any bad. But all I'm saying is, you had a need. The need you had, had nothing. I, like I said, I stand corrected. It was because, like you said, I wanted to build an empire. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I want to do this. It's got nothing to do with, okay, can I raise a family with this person? Can I be emotionally connected with this person? Can I can I, can I raise kids with this person? Can I, you know, mm. live money, live business, live raising an empire. Those things are things you can get anyhow. These things are the base of every relationship. Is this person, are we compatible? So you did not, uh, did you, did you think about the compatibility? Is he on your same level when it comes to emotioning, emotional, emotionally? You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) And you get it. Now, all those things, I think that you kept those things at the back burner. And then you took these ones because you wanted to be a power couple, which is what a lot of people are pushing for these days. Mm. Oh, I want to be the Jay-Z and the Beyonce. I want to be this and be that. Mm. It gets to the point where you guys just become partners and not married couples. Don't you think that was what happened? I, um, like I said, I stand corrected. Looking, looking back now. Looking back, looking now. back now. Well, looking back now, mm-hmm. I would say that... Um, it's, I, I think that was part of it. Exactly. But it wasn't really, it, it didn't make it like, you know, as a whole. As in, the, of course there was love. There was, I wanted to, I looked at him as, this is a matter I want, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with and I'm going to have family with children, whatever, you know. But at the same time, I want, I, my, my, for myself, I wanted a man who I was going to love, be whatever, build with. I wanted to build with a man, which is nothing bad in building with mm-hmm, a man, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, because people always say, eh, must you be with a man? Of course, yes. I'm, is it a woman I'm going to be with? Of course, I want to be with a man, mm. you know, and grow with a man mm-hmm. and build with them, you know, because it's much harder if you build with a man. It's much harder to leave what because defined, you have something What together. defined the love? Define love? What defined the love for you, for him? Because you said... I'm just listening to what you're saying. Okay. So, oh, I go, of course I love the man. What defined the love for you? Was it him? Or the power that he has? Or what he, what you are when you are with him? I believe um, him as a person and um, basically um, the way I would say Probably like getting to know him a little bit and what he showed me because what he showed me in the beginning is what made me fall in love with him. So Which was what? You know, the care, the, you know, um just just everything a woman would feel like when she's when she knows a man is the man is hers mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. What was the care? Was he buying you things? <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, saying. Of course, yes, he did. He did. He did. Um, you know, you know, basically, um, bought me some things, and as well, I did as well. You know, I love that. Like, if I'm giving, like, a man is like gifting me something, mm-hmm. I give to, I give right back. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, you know, that's my love language. 
you know, and that's what it is, you know, and that but was why I fell in love with it. Stepping away from that, though, so stepping away from the gift exchanging because it wasn't just receiving, you know, was he emotionally available to you at the beginning? Exactly. Did you feel that emotional connection wow. from him at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm was going. Was it more of like what he represented? Because exactly, as women, it's baby. easy. Like I'll, I'll say it how it is. You know, <laughs> it's it, it's easy you, to fall I into. Need, like, I don't need to be just about him because that's just the past. Right? Right. No, I know, I Absolutely. get it. No, Absolutely. people Absolutely. are gonna learn from it. <laughs> yeah. So that you don't make it about something, mm -hmm. but make it about something that's gonna last longer mm -hmm. than about something that's superficial, isn't it? Well. Uh, Oh, this is this is hard. <laughs> Do you know what? You could be helping a woman that's watching exactly. and trying to figure out, you know, am I with this man for the wrong reason? Should I stay or should I go? Well, uh, I would say, uh, well, <laughs> initially, um, uh, looking back mm -hmm. now, now I would say he wasn't emotionally invested. Mm -hmm. But you didn't notice right then. Because there was something covering it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly, my And that's point. what a lot of men do. A lot of my Nigerian exactly. men, they yes. will not have their emotional yes. like availability or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they'll cover that and mask that with like giving you things. This, Which yeah. is what Nigerian process. men do. Yes, yeah. yeah. they'll first give you things. Yes. They'll draw you in. Yep. Mm -hmm. When they draw you in. And that's and especially lucky boys. <laughs> especially what? Lucky, lucky boys. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, lucky guy will look at you. <laughs> oh, I've checked her Instagram page. This guy like... This life. She likes yes. these. She likes yes. these, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to drop two million for this girl. Mm -hmm. Budget. Budget of two million. Mm -hmm. Spread now, out over six to months. To flex Lagos. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. two, two. He's gonna boom. Mm. At first, oh, what's up? How you doing, love? You look fucking pretty. Do you know what, yeah? For you to talk to me, I'm sure it must have taken you a lot of stress. How about you shoot me your account number? I'm gonna make you feel better. Mm. So yes. you can go for massage. Yes. And then you do that. He hits you with a 500,000 naira in your account. Someone did that to me, my DM. Someone sent me 500,000 naira. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, take this for lunch. I was like, okay. Why are some people doing this? Eh? Some people are trying hard. We are composing poem. You, you are going to DM to just want the 500,000. <laughs> well, you know, like, we, women, we are known as the um, weaker gender right yes and you're men, not men by the way men prey on this a lot so that's why they will come at you they will love bump you they will send yep. you different gifts they will they will buy you different things and you you are going to miss that part of oh let me check for the red, red flags. flags let me yes. see if he's a mad person obviously he's going to camouflage with good behavior then later it will, it will move back and start moving mad. That's, then yes. you are there like, what happened? Which what is happened? Why? But that's why you're supposed what to, like do? you're supposed to notice when mm -hmm. he starts shifting and when that energy shift starts happening. You might be thinking he's in a bad mood yeah. or maybe something didn't go but right. For how long? Okay, so um, lots of Nigerian men later, they will show their true behavior. So do you think maybe dating for a short period of time, getting to know your man for like that so short period of time also contributed to the relationship? Yes, less yes, anything. yes, actually. Because um, I didn't do, like, um, my due diligence, like, you know, in terms of, like, you know, getting to know his, you know, his background. Mm -hmm. And I just moved into Nigeria. So I didn't really know, like, like his whole, like, you know. Steve. Uh, yeah, Nigeria, yeah, man. Yes, <laughs> you know. So I was like, okay, oh. Like, I was, like, fascinated. Like, okay, this guy wants to marry me. And so he's really serious. You know, always wanted to, wants to talk to my dad and stuff like that, you know. So, I, yeah. So I felt like that short period of time, I felt if I, if I, you know, took my time to know him, I don't think I would have gotten married. Mm. Yes, mm. I don't think I would have. I would have probably just, you know, walk away. So, 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 so would you say, would you say, would you say if you had dated him for, like, more than three months like you did, you you would have known the kind of person he is, or maybe if you now did somebody for a longer period of time, can guarantee success in marriage. That okay, I know mm, this person better. Not really, because I I know some people that have that have known each other for like ten years and they get married, and within that one year of marriage, they divorce. Mm. You know, so mm. it is it, it can't really you mm -hmm. can't really tell. But in terms of like behavior wise, I felt I I actually feel that if I've known him for that long, and I've se I see some little you know, character and red flags, I would have just... You, you know, said something. Going. You said something, which I think is very huge. 
even if I think most of us know here, you said he was always calling your dad. Yeah. Mm. Now, a lot of ladies, I think one of the major problem, but I, like anything I say, I stand corrected. This is my opinion. A lot of ladies, because of the fact that they put marriage in front of them, mm -hmm. when they see anything that is in semblance to what they want, they easily fall for it without thinking twice. Now, a lot of ladies, when you start calling their mother, ah, let me talk to your mother. Oh, let me, I'm sending you something. Let me send to your mother as well. Oh, your father. Okay, let me do this one for your father. It does cause some points mm -hmm. for your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When normally that is not enough. And those are the things that Nigerian men also do. Which they, they know that most ladies, now marriage, now just, then just carry marriage for mm -hmm. head, then carry marriage mm -hmm. for head. And I also, now our society also, they define all those things. We make them, they always look out for all those things. Now, do you also think that when somebody, for you to now be, no really somebody you want to get married to, what are the things that you now, getting married to that guy, you would have done different if you had met him now? What would you have done different? Uh, actually, what I've done different is actually, um, you know, studied the kind of person he is. Um, actually, uh, look at how he responds to like his anger level. Mm. Um, I would have probably maybe done something a little just to see how he's gonna react to it because sometimes you have to see somebody when they're angry and mm -hmm. what they can mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. you know, when they're mad and angry, mm -hmm. and that will actually, you know, um, make you actually give you some kind of insights and mm -hmm. in how you're going to make your decisions, mm -hmm. you know? And, and now if any guy is coming, I look at a lot of things. I, do, I, and if I see like, uh, man. Now, so Baba, no vex, wedding, no vex, no vex, wedding. no vex. So. I want to talk about the wedding. Uh, we are going you're to supposed to be the MC. Mm. No, I was supposed we, to be the MC. Yeah, what we happened? reached out to you, you remember? Uh, no, you didn't reach yes, out to me. Yes, we did. We actually, um, there was a, um, um, is it an Airbnb or whatever you were in? Where it was in it was in Lucky like Phase One. Okay. Um it's uh I've forgotten his name. Oh I can't remember actually, but you were there. Okay, Ferdinand. Uh, yeah, Ferdinand, yes. yes. Ferdinand's my friend. So Ferdinand, uh yeah, you were there. And I think I told my uh, Dan him to reach out to you, my ex husband to reach out to you. Mm. you but i don't know how it went no they, they didn't reach out to me they if they did it would have would have well, both of us would have anchored the wedding we kill yeah. weddings so yeah. Baba, no <laughs> so i was going to also say that you, you have made a very important point and that point is you know responsibility and accountability yes mm -hmm. you highlighted some of the things you look out for mm -hmm. you know and you did not mention maybe oh whether the person will take you to a fancy restaurant buy you this or buy you that you have said you want to know um Anger whether this level. yes, it's anger level. Le yes, yes. Level. So I think it's also important to point out that you know you must prioritize your interest and look out for those things. Mm -hmm. Some people get carried away mm -hmm. by, oh, he's always buying me this. Right. Do you know he has yes. spoken to my father? Yeah. He has Bam. taken me to his mother. Bam. Bam. While while mm -hmm. all of these are, you know, good, mm -hmm. everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. But it's important to look out for other things because if you be say the person they put up show. Now, we have mentioned, you know, people who are um, uh, narcissists. We have mentioned what society thinks. But I also think it's important that we emphasize on these um, subjects now. You mentioned that, you know, in the course of your conversation, you know, he hinted that, you know, you would get respect mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. are married. Yes. You know, and what will people say? Yes. And you had also mentioned, you know, people thinking about, ah, what will society say if I leave this, yes. uh, my marriage? Sure. I would want us to talk about, you know, societal pressure and our perception of what people think about our situation that makes people mask their pain and decide to live inside it so rather than just there. walking away. Yeah, because a lot of women, like, well, in this, like I said, in the society that we live in, unfortunately, they feel like if a marriage fails, it's on the woman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they will look at a woman as a failure. Mm -hmm. Because someone told me I'm a failure because my marriage does not work. Hmm. Wow. Somebody yes. you know. Yeah. Or no, somebody on the internet. Someone on the internet said I'm a failure okay. because my marriage. Uh, a man, internet. actually. Uh. Yes. <laughs> told me I'm a failure. That my marriage. I said, okay, so you want me to die there? You know? And he was like, no, that you're supposed to make it work, more, more, you know, mm -hmm. mental words. I said, at the at so my, my you know, detriment. At the detriment of my mental health? No, mm -hmm. hell no. No, it's not. No. You know? And I, like I said, a lot of women. 
I don't want to come out because a lot of women come into my DM and tell me what they're going through with their husbands, uh, you know, and how they want to leave, but they cannot leave. Mm. You know, they don't know what to do. Mm. Like, you know, some people say they come on my page, just get some kind of encouragement, mm-hmm. you know, um, to leave. A lot of women are going through a lot. Yep. Yes. A lot in this, yeah. in this. And there's no, there's no right for me. There's no women's rights in this country. There is no women's right. If you mm. even if a, your your husband beats you up or whatever man beats you up, you go to so police station to go and report. Say <laughs> what did you do, my dad? Police go even pursue you. Yes, yeah, so you say mm. you must have said something to him for him to beat for you him up. To mm-hmm. beat mm-hmm. You. you must have done something wrong, and that is very very wrong. That's very wrong. Another thing I think is um, totally unf- unfair. The society degrade women in some in a particular way. If you are not married and you are single, ah, you are still hot in the market. Mm-hmm. If you've been married before. Mm, mm-hmm. Second degree, yeah. like second. Yeah. But if you've been married before and you now had At kids, ah, they'll be like, ooh, marry this son. She definitely has bad character. She'll yes. be a bad mother. So I think he prayed on that. Yes. Because for him to come into your DMs and tell you that you'll be well respected, yeah. it feels, okay, I'm not talking, but sorry, you. Um, the person feels like, um, okay, let me let me get into, the person likes you, yes, fine, but he wants to get into a relationship with you and when he started moving mad or maybe when, it feels like maybe you won't leave because you're, yes. you're, you're married, I mean, you're a woman with kids it's before a, and this mm-hmm. is your second marriage. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why it was moving mad, but look at you, you're strong enough, you mm-hmm. have your own work, look you have your own career, you're moving. That's what most Nigerian women need to learn that yes. you need to have something substantial, mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. good, yes. something mm-hmm. great going for you, for you mm-hmm. to be able to move on and not give a fuck about what society is saying. Yes, yes. Financial independence. But with that yeah. being said, I think that, yeah, financial independence is like super important for any woman. But at the same time, if you are in a marriage, because you are a team and like Nedu said, you stand behind your husband, you don't lord that financial independence over your husband because that's something that happens. I think we can all agree that men have somewhat their egos men's yes, egos they love their, yeah. ego. they love their egos mm-hmm. they love them you gotta massage their ego mm-hmm. and i think a lot of women especially the better you do as a woman independently the chances are that you want to you know flex yes. a little bit and that's fine and that's okay but that could in turn somewhat damage your partner's ego so going back to yourself and your previous marriage we've spoken about you know how you felt in the marriage how you kind of got swept away in the whirlwind romance three months of dating thinking that okay he's calling my dad he's taking care of me he wants to marry he's me he's serious about everywhere. he's flying yeah and that, you know that's all well and good um and you got carried away but let's actually talk about you know what your perception of his feelings were because you know, for him to want to marry you, I feel like for yes. a man to want to marry a woman, and our wedding was it must huge, take, so yeah, it must it take was... something. So, like, mm. do you think? Marriage, ten million, no. <laughs> 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 but do you think that he was also equally as invested, or what do you think it was for him? Was he trying to maybe like a, a status symbol? Okay, I'm marrying this woman. Like, what do you think it was for him? I think it's all like, uh, I think it was just for him, like his own ego and selfishness. Um, I don't think he it was real for him, like. Mm love or you know being committed and all that what makes you say that because he told me if i leave another one will enter mm. so <laughs> that's what it's too yes. short it's too short for that too short for but yes. i'm gonna play so, devil's advocate here if you I, nobody should ever say that especially in a marriage I, I i wouldn't like that to be said to me in a marriage however the reality of the situation is men and women fall in and out of love every day yes so if we're being realists and honest the truth is if you break up with a person, you can find another person. Do you, don't you think that maybe that's what he could have meant or where he could have been? Again, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, yes. But nobody said that to me. No, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 that's, Yeah, because I, personally me, if I fall out, if I leave, I'm going to find another nigga. Period. You know? uh, Honestly, period. you know, yeah. there are a lot of them in the ocean. So, <laughs> so um, is he just the bad guy for saying it out loud? Yes. Yeah, well, at the time when he told me, it, our so marriage was, yeah, it's respectful. Mm. And our marriage was so new. It's not like we've been mm. together for 10 years. Okay. Or 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? How long did the marriage last for? Four months. You dated for three months. <laughs> marriage <laughs> last for four months. But there, there, there were things I saw online. Yes. Um... I don't know if it was you that said he's brought his girlfriends to the wedding. Who? Whoa. He brought his girlfriends to the wedding. <laughs> how did you know that? That how did you know they were his girlfriends? Did you know at the wedding? Well, I'm a very understanding woman. Mm. I would say that. Ooh. Did wait, you? wait, understanding. <laughs> yes. There is understanding girlfriend, there's understanding, understanding wife. Yeah. <laughs> wait, but did you know at the wedding though? 
Yes, I, I, yes, definitely. Did you I interact? Wasn't a problem. I didn't. I'm not the kind of person. I'm not like would say stop. You know, fighting this person. What are you doing here? Because a lot of people have this like view of me like I'm this like troublesome person. Yeah. But if you bring trouble to my doorstep, I will give you time stand. Period. You understand? <laughs> but this whole situation was like uh, it's my wedding day. I want to be happy. I don't want anything to like, you know, take And the guys maybe when from. they come to spray you money, save even dance with you. Yeah, yeah it's a small it's aftermath now, like after the wedding, if that thing keeps con- like continuing, mm-hmm. that's a problem. You know? Because I've had a situation where, you know, I've you know, um in the U.S., we have issues like you can you can invite your ex to, True. you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, your like, for instance, my my ex-husband in the U.S., his girlfriend, actually, we relate to, with each other. She comes then I used to have a salon in, in Boston. She comes to my salon to do her hair. That kind of relationship kind of thing. You know, it's not a big problem. You know, it's what they call blending, like blending mm-hmm. families mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. In Nigeria, the culture is different. Mm. You know, so I I have that mentality coming down no. here. So it wasn't no. an issue. He was he was he according to you, he brought his girlfriends to the wedding. But there's another one that he said before I said other things. He said you gave him S T D. No. Yes, I saw it on the internet. No, it's actually me that said that. Okay, yeah, sorry. You said he gave you S T D. Well how did I don't you... that is that is the past that's gone. No, you know, how did you? <laughs> I don't want to, you know, usually I don't want to ponder on that because, you know, a lot of women go through that, like, you know, their husband cheating on them, then come home and give them whatever they get outside and whatnot, you know, something. But uh, out of that, I forgave him for all of that. You know? Now, I, I, I also want to ask something. Um, What made you leave Ubi Franklin, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> How did you I guys? We are so cool right now. Yeah, so of course cool. you guys are so cool right now. Um, <laughs> my besties right yeah, no. now. No. So cool. what? 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 What made you? What made you leave? Did he? I mean, Ubi is a wonderful person. Yes, he I'm is. I'm just. I'm just gonna put it that way. Mm. Now, you guys met. I don't want to talk about how you guys met. Mm. What was the deal breaker for you with Ubi? I just felt like there were too many of us around, so I just oh. couldn't take okay, it. Okay, too too many baby mamas. No, 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 baby mamas. Like too many women around. So. But can I say something to yeah. you, though? Are you Christian? Yes, I am. But do you know that it's... <laughs> where are you going with this? I think I know what you want to say. Like a man, like, you know, it's natural for a man to have a lot of, like... I'm just saying, honey, for me, personally, I think... I don't... <sighs> mm-hmm. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how. <laughs> I didn't think I can wait. Wait, I think. Do you think having another woman is strong enough for you to leave somebody? It depends if the attention is not being divided you know, enough. Yes. Well, if you're not showing me attention and you're showing. So if he's showing you attention, he's giving you hundred percent, hundred percent attention. And so in out outside, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't mind. I don't mind. Hmm. That's I don't what mind. she meant by understanding. Uh, okay. No okay. And you, you're in the marriage. I, like I, you, as long as I'm in the known, as long as, as, long as I know, you yes. know, because I don't want to be in the dark. I know, mm. okay. you know, that's fine. Because nobody from outside come and tell me, oh, I saw this person. Right. I saw it. I already know. I'm not going to, you know, ponder on that, you know. But if I'm left in the dark and you're doing other things and you're not, you know. In all Taking these, me along. In all these things, we're talking about what um, Rhea Hair did. What did you do that made him agree to leave the marriage? Because you're going to paint yourself so clean. Oh, I'm the no. right person. I'm the perfect person. From everything we don't talk since, we're talking about, okay, Rhea Hair did this, Rhea Hair did that, Rhea Hair did that. It takes two to tango, innit? Yes, it does. What did you... Because like for him I to said, agree to marry... Check and, check and yes. draw, okay, draw so I, I can I tell don't you. can't understand even mm, you. Yes. I what understand. did you... Because you must have did something. <laughs> what did you... What are I didn't, the things I didn't, that up you... To now, up to today, I don't know what I did. Sandra, actually. Sandra, no, no, I can tell you. Now. Like I said earlier, I said I'm a very outspoken person. If something bo- bothers me, I say it as it is and I move on. But some men don't like that. They want you to, not to talk on it, not to speak on it. Mm. They want you to be quiet about it. Who are you? Keep quiet. But you know? Sandra, what is it about you 
That has made the first man go. <laughs> Ubi Franklin go. You see what I'm Royal saying? Royal hair go. But you see, what is it about you? you what did you say? did? You see, what, you see what I'm saying now? You're saying what society would say. Yeah. I'm not society. You know, I'm Chine. Do yes. is what I'm so asking I'm saying, you. That's the thing. There must be something about you, innit? Anything that's not, that doesn't serve me good purpose, I leave. I'm not going to be there because if I, like I said, if I'm going to say something, I can't keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. Mm -hmm. At one time, you're going to be, you're going to sound like a broken record and nobody's going to take you seriously. Well, so that, you got to okay. leave. But I do want to know, you are, I feel like there's a little bit of contradiction to what you're saying. You mentioned earlier on that cheating is a deal breaker. But now you're saying something contrary. Okay, if so, I know, it's not going to be know, it's okay. no, but then, about knowing like cheating, like going outside. Now, what I'm going to say is going to be very controversial because it's not everybody... Maybe I should just keep no, quiet. Say it. No, say no, 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 that's why we're here. You know, a lot of women are in a marriage because um, their husband or whatever, or, you know, it's like pretty much know what they're doing. Because I, I, I do know, I know that some men cannot stay with one woman. Mm -hmm. okay. It's it's impossible. Mm -hmm. You understand? So you have to, some, some women have that in the back of their mind, okay. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they help some women, help their men get... Yeah. Girlfriends, it's girlfriends, you know. Okay. So the you, moment you would have preferred, you were the one helping him to get the girlfriends. <laughs> is it? Is that what you would prefer? Is that what you say? Is that well, what you well, do? you know, it's <laughs> not exactly. I don't. Think yes, so. you know, there are some women. There are some women that you see. It's so, better. It's, so the truth is, what she's it saying. What, what, what Sandra is saying is, what Sandra is saying is, if I understand what she's saying. It would be better for her if she's the one that chooses the girls. No, no, no. Is that no. what you're saying? It's better I for her to know no. through her husband that, okay, okay, yes, I might be talking to a few people than, than not outside finding out true yeah. and outside out or through a text message. It's embarrassing. It you is. Know, you know, the, the effect is going to have when you when you um, catch somebody is not the same effect it will have when you know no. something already. If the girls he's dating are the people you know, are you going to be comfortable with it? No, I won't be comfortable with it. Now, would you would you choose would you choose now for you to be not worried or anything? Would you be more comfortable if you had chosen the girls for him, and well, you are the one in control of it? If I was in control of it, definitely. Mm. You would so have you been would okay actually, with it. Is that what? You would have been okay with it well, if you were the one that is in charge of picking the girls. If maybe <laughs> yeah, well, it depends on the agreement that we both have. Is it also because, I mean, I get it, the fact that you th that you believe that if you had chosen the girl, it would be okay for you. Say you for, now you for choose the girls, if they're okay for you. Do you think, you sure say, now nah, because of say, because it gets, it gets as, as tone, maybe as me and Bibi did so, now maybe Bibi not fine, as Bibi she's fucking she's, pretty, it? So and girl. then maybe, and now maybe we're dating, it? I can't go stay with another person, we're not too fine, rich Bibi. Oh, I go but, vex. <laughs> Hey, that yes, one. Yes. Have you seen me? And then maybe and is now somebody that is finer, sexier, hotter than BB. That's why she will now go. What have I done to deserve this? Is it because the girls he was cheating with was not as fine as you are, or they were finer than you are? Um, actually, I do love fine girls, so I would not say like it has to do with you know the beauty or anything like that well I, I would say like you know um i would say a lot of um issues that happened was me just giving free hand and um basically letting him do a lot of stuff mm. in the marriage so i would also say is. that do you think that that claim that initial claim of you know people would respect you do you think it also affected your psyche and in your actions you were very particular about what you were doing because you also thought about it and said ah if the first one no work as the second one day now, everybody go blame me. Mm. What will people say? Do you mm. think it also affected, you know, how you committed yourself in the relationship and what you were doing? Yes. Uh, it, yes, it actually, um, I was, yes, it actually, actually affected me because I really wanted that marriage to work. Like I really wanted it to work. So I didn't want anyone to like feel or think that I was, you know, I didn't, I couldn't keep a home or anything like that. But mm. it was not, it was not in my hands. My marriage was not in my hands. Even though I tried, I did a lot of things to try to make it work, but it was more like, you know, it was, it was a wasted effort. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because when, when I believe in a marriage, mm -hmm. it takes two people. It does. Mm -hmm. It's not, 
in Nigeria, they always say, oh, a woman, go make your marriage, go keep your home. A woman should keep her home. Mm. It's both, a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, because if the woman is willing and a man is not willing, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. True. You know? And when you see that the woman is making effort and you're not making effort, mm -hmm. it's not nothing. No matter what, it's never going to work. And that was what happened to me because I took all the whole shame and everything. And with my pregnancy, I really wanted it to work. There's a time itself I was moving, moving the name, my last, my uh, married, married name. And taking it off, taking it, like it was affecting it. Was affect it. Mm. You know, I was like, and then one time I just made a decision. I said, let me just go back and make it work. But mm. it didn't work out because it was just me. So are you saying that it. you could have stayed had he had been more honest yes. about the whole, the, everything, this, yes. the whole situation? Yes. I so all have, you wanted was transparency. Transparency. So what do Nigerian men want? Because here you have an understanding wife. Mm -hmm. That is understanding that, okay, a man may have needs and, you know, maybe will not be able to stay just with me, but I want him to just give me attention, giving him a free rope, but that's still not enough. Like with the condition of just tell me the truth and that's still not enough. Like what, what else? You know, I see, I see this thing somewhere that when a man keeps cheating and he doesn't know what he wants, that he's looking for a man. <laughs> he's looking for another man. Ooh. Because he will keep looking, looking, looking. Sandra, and I want to ask you one crazy question. Woman. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I want to ask you a very crazy question. If your ex-husband, Rio Hair, had come home one day and told you, Sandra, I know you know that I have girlfriends outside, but right now, um, I want you to be the one picking them and I want both of us to have sex with them, what would you do? If that's what I... At, at that time, if if I see... Some sense into it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you feel like you see the way your husband, your former husband um, was aware that you're OK with him, you know, cheating as long as you were in the know? Do you felt like do you feel like it was kind of give him an inch? He took a mile type of situation like he took it and he ran with it and overdid it. Or would you have been OK with it regardless as long as the honesty was there? Um, I would say like um, he was he didn't be, he wasn't telling me who he was with or whatever it is. It's stuff that I found out. So um, I wasn't OK with it. And he knows I wasn't OK with it. Mm -hmm. So but I, if we had a conversation, you know, like another conversation, because this the world is changing. A lot of things are happening, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, keeping a marriage you know, a lot of people, you know, have things, different things that work for them. Right. You know, to make them stay long in a marriage. But I felt like, yes, if he was, you know, transparent enough and, you know, told me, um, Sandra, this is what it is. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I cannot, I'm trying to stop, but I can't stop. But I want you to be in the known, mm -hmm. you know, and help me. That kind of stuff, like help me. Um Definitely, I would you know we'll find a way around it Help to actually how. work it. Just like someone who's addicted to cocaine, you know, they can't just stop like that, you know, mm. or someone who's addicted to, you know, some kind of stuff. Like, you know, once, you know, in a while, you know, they kind of get that, you know, jump and whatnot. So that's what I'm trying to say in terms of this. Do you think that what do you think that society or your personal push made you? get into the next marriage what was it that gave you the strength because a lot of women are suffering in marriages right now that they can't leave mm -hmm. either because of say they don't get transport money or because they don't know how to catch themselves when they leave um and also in some relations some people are also in relationships that they can't leave, leave. Mm -hmm. what was it that was the spur for you what was it that that gave you that ginger that push to leave and say, okay, do you know what? I can't do this. Okay. Um, I remember when I came back and I was devastated. And then when I lived in my when I moved into my new place and I was like, oh God, yeah, what am I gonna do? Then I remember getting served um diverse letter. And I remember that night I screamed and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, you know. But what really gave me that push was that, you know. Who served you, the first husband? No, 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 no. My, no. Yeah. Yes, right, right. Um, okay. Royal here served me the divorce. Through my lawyer, um, served me the divorce paper. And I, that night I was like, wow, it's actually hitting on me. Because it didn't really hit on me that I was actually getting divorced until I was served the divorce letter. And I was like, okay, um, this is it. I, I need, to, for my son, 
I needed to um, actually uh, gather strength and gather um, positivity that is going to be better because I cannot be in my, because at the time I was always in my room. I don't come out. I was always in my house. I don't come out. So I needed that. I needed to, to do something different. I needed to, you know, revamp. I needed to be, I needed to get my, you know, as I say, you know, still I got her groove back. I mean, how do they say it? Mm -hmm. You know, get that confidence back. Yes. I had to get my confidence back. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of people were watching. But there was one know? thing that Organa do mentioned that I feel like you still haven't quite answered, which is obviously there were things that you saw on mm -hmm. your side yes. that he was doing and that things that you felt. But what was he saying that you were doing? Um, he said a lot of things that I was doing, which at that point in time I was pregnant. So he said I wasn't cooking for him. Mm -hmm. We had a chef. So mm -hmm. I don't understand how he said I needed to be in the kitchen directing the chef to cook. Oh. And like, I was like, we already have a timetable. You know, those kinds of things. He said, I, I, I was throwing pillows on the floor, you know, and I wasn't cleaning the house, that I needed to dust out the house. And we had a house boy, so I don't understand how I needed to, a whole seal and businesswoman has to be clean a whole house, you know, mm. when they already have people doing, doing the job. Doing that yeah. job, you know. So there was nothing like emotionally lacking in what he was you know, saying to you, there was not, it wasn't like you were not a good listener to him. You were not there for him in times of his need, so on and so forth. No, there's nothing concrete. Up to today, I don't even know why. I think he treated you like that because he settled. Yes. Literally. Yeah, I, I that's believe why so. he treated you like that. So most times when we talk about society, eh, the conversation is like we're talking of people from maybe Jupiter hmm. or people with two heads. But society yes, referred to, you know, you and I. Yes. Now we be society. It's, yes, yeah. we are. I'm curious to know how your the role your family played in maybe giving you emotional stability. Mm -hmm. Because I know that pregnancy is life changing. Yes. <laughs> Anybody when don't deal with person when they're pregnant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you go no say, no be even the person. It changes a person's life. Yes. Now to be in that situation, you know, pregnant at that point and having to deal with this kind of situation first how did you deal with it as a pregnant woman number one then number two what role did your family play in providing some sort of stability and support because i don't hear of people who go tell you say as you are leaving this place i'm going to your husband's house delete my number <laughs> I'm, you know it's just yes, mama lamba yes, yes. delete my number you are not coming back here anything you see there face it so two in one how did you deal with it at that point in time as somebody who was heavily pregnant then number two what role did your family play in providing support um, I would say like, okay, let me first answer the, the first question. Um, when, well, being pregnant, actually, there's a lot of like hormones, like, you know, going everywhere. And I remember that I didn't eat for a straight two weeks because I was very, I was really depressed. I was crying. Yes, I, I. You didn't eat and you were I, pregnant. Yes, I didn't eat. My, I lost weight. I actually posted a picture about it. I, I lost weight and I, food was not, I didn't want to eat. My, my dad, my mom was really concerned. It was like, Sandra, you, you, you don't like, you're going to kill yourself. You know, you're carrying a child. So you're going to mm -hmm. kill yourself. I said that I don't even want to leave, you know, like all this kind of, because at that time when he called me out on social media, I, I couldn't believe it. So I was like, really devastated. Mm -hmm. So, but my parents are actually, and my family, a good support system. They never, they don't come online to like say anything or mm -hmm. whatnot, because they're not really online people, but my, especially my dad and my mom, mm -hmm. very, very supportive. My, my brothers very very my sisters because mm. they took care of me when I went back to the US um, um, to give birth my dad was like he couldn't even believe it mm. you know he couldn't he couldn't believe the whole thing because it, the marriage was so new you know he couldn't even believe my mom you know I said mom was like Sandra I want you I did I want you I want, I saw something that man I, I told you not to marry him but you still went ahead to marry you know that mm. kind of stuff you know mm. uh, but she said you know but you know what I understand that's no, wait, love. before we talk about that understanding, yeah. let's talk about what she saw. Because the truth is, and, and I, in the course of our, in the course of the Honest Bond podcast, we've had a conversation where we discussed whether one would go on with a marriage with nice boy. without the consent of their parents. Now, Momsi told you that she warned you because she saw something. Yes. You know, is it possible for you to share some of the things she said? And so whether, was she direct in telling you, see, Sandra, this is what I believe, oh, this is what I'm seeing, oh. Yes. Or she was giving you hints, but love don't cover your eyes. Yes, if before then, we had a situation where, like, I had to lock myself in this house. Um, I had to lock myself in 
because I, with a knife, I saw I was gonna I was gonna kill myself because he was he was really messing up my mental health. My dad had to leave his work. My mom my mom had to leave, and she because my mom is still in Nigeria because of me. She moved down to 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 Nigeria because of the whole situation, and um, they came into the house, and this this man was throwing my um, my um, belongings from upstairs downstairs in front of my parents wow. um and um shouting and insulting my parents right in front of wow. the me. same parents that he was like asking yes to speak yes to. yes so my dad is a very stupid man there's nothing wow. he didn't say same dad that he was trying to call yes that, yeah. yes okay. yes a lot of unspeakable <laughs> things he said about my dad um you know and you know what's unfortunately is like you know it's just the fact that you know where my dad has been he can never walk in you know, the rooms my father has been in, he can never walk in. So my dad is a very quiet man. So he doesn't really say much, but he takes a lot of action. Mm-hmm. Because I do remember a time where um, he actually threatened me with a gun. He said he was going to shoot me. So my dad had to involve the AIG in Abuja, I believe so. Got him to, they went to search his house for the gun. Because how can you be threatening a pregnant woman that you're going to kill her with a gun? You know, so I really, really, really love the fact that my parents were really involved in the whole thing and they didn't expect me to, because what he was expecting was maybe my dad coming to beg, like, what is going on? What, you know, uh, my in law. Yeah, my in law, this kind of stuff. But my dad is not like that. My dad will never. Mm-hmm. His children comes first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think that's one of the things that really got him really agitated. Like, oh, nobody's coming to beg. Nobody's what was the thing your mom really said that? What my mom really said was that, okay, so during the time where he made his intention of going, going, wanted to get married to me, my mom was like, who is this man that wants to marry you that hasn't even called me? Because mm. he didn't call my mom at all. Mm. He didn't talk to my mother mm. at all. He was all. only calling your dad. Yes. So he doesn't have value for women. Yes. <laughs> he, he doesn't definitely. Allegedly. I'm not saying that. <laughs> so, you know, my mom was like, why? Like, he has, she hasn't even spoken to this man that really want to to get married to me like what's up with that like at least i'm you know you're my daughter Mm -hmm. he's supposed to talk to me you know so i can know his intentions but she never did so So she said that was one of the conversation with popsy yes so that was a major reason why one of the the major reason because she my mom wanted to have a conversation with him Mm -hmm. you know was shying away from it my dad mom wanted to have a conversation with him and you know moms now they will ask you questions they they know things they know things yes So after he met your mom for the first time, what did your mom tell you um, about him? My mom, mom really did not tell me because at that point in time, she knows that I've gone far. Mm-hmm. So she didn't really want to discourage me. She said, well, if that's what she wants, you know, you can go ahead and do, but I'm going to tell you that I don't feel good about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That motherly instinct. Yeah, you know, true. women, you see, you see which, which, true. which is that thing that I said? We, it's just like apps that you download. You download WhatsApp. WhatsApp give you updates all the time. I'm going to say this, not because I'm trying to be some dickhead or anything. I think women are the updated versions of men. What mm-hmm. they know, what they can know, we cannot know. Me and you, if we sit down here, if we sit down with Bibi, Bibi might be your girlfriend. And then Sandra gets in here. All of us go just come out. Bibi go begin vex for you. You go, they wonder what happened. Can't you say that Sandra was eyeing you? <laughs> but me and you not see, say Sandra the eye. Confirm with facts. Mm-hmm. facts. No, facts. Yes, no, but facts. sometimes yes. men are always acting oh, oblivious oh, 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 on purpose. Hold on. We don't on know. Purpose. But they know when a woman wants you. But me and you, if we look from Nancy to use it, we not go see him. I'm still so saying you see, it again. Men, you guys act oblivious on purpose eh, to that. Eh, eh, see, but what no, you're saying happens, is true. It happens, but it's not sometimes. always. It's it happens, not always. It's not always. always. Just like a man eh, can also mm. see if another man is eyeing his girlfriend. Mm. Yes. It's just yes, like it's just like, like saying, that one. The girl that I was saying, yeah, it's, it's just, just like, like it's just men, like they would deny. It's just like a woman saying that <laughs> she cannot openly tell you she likes you, but mm-hmm. she's going to drop hints. <laughs> so for the man, sometimes the man feel looks okay. Well, if this girl Tosho say this girl like me, maybe he yeah, go so touch me it. one way or rub his body for my way. He doesn't see it, but the woman just begins to sense. Once she, once you get the way when you go look the Women man, she don't know say. This one. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> if I leave my mouth with this person, two seconds, Straight everywhere up. go bust. We know mm. the tricks. I, I think it's also important. Uh, sorry, uh, Bibi. I think it's important that we also point out that, like you have said, 
your parents played, your parents and your siblings played a very critical role mm. in giving you support. Yes. Now, I know that nobody prays for a bad situation mm -hmm. because from the beginning, nobody could come talk, say, and the day when this thing goes spoil, mm. make it day like this. Everybody hopes that it will be happily ever right after. after. Yeah. But the truth is, these situations happen. And when it does, you must try as much as you can to understand the perspective of the person in that situation and not blame the person and say, hey, you uncle, what did you do? I mean, I have seen videos on the wedding day where the mother says, if you are tired of this, if you are tired of my daughter, or the father even says, any day you are tired of my daughter, bring just her bring her back. back. Mm, I don't yes. want a situation where, and the papa go they cry, the mama go they cry. Say any day when you tire, just bring her back. Exactly. I don't want a situation where this thing happens. I think it's a very important life lesson for us to learn that, you know, when people are victims, mm. you that is not when you begin to, that's not when you put on your inspector bidiaco hat and begin to ask them questions and say, you too, your mouth is sharp. You look yeah. like somebody that has been disrespecting. Yeah. Or why didn't you even cook for him? What is there? She be chef there, but you too, you should have just been there. At least do it for him. So I think that it's important to point that out and everyone should have that understanding. Mm -hmm. But accountability is important as well. Yeah. True. So in the moment when they need that support, offer them that support. But afterwards, you can definitely have a word, especially if it's somebody that's close to you, like, hey, going forward, mm -hmm. maybe yes. you can try and improve yeah. on X, Y, Z. Because I remember I actually um, begged. I actually begged him. I was like, please. When, when did you beg him? Was it? After the clothes and the insults to your parents, everything. After the gun, even incident. when I was pregnant, uh, when oh. he when he um, because I left, but he went on social media to say that he kicked me out. Um, then I did you provoke that social media post in any way? Shape, no, or I form? I did I didn't. Was there anything that you could have done because to make him want to put it in the public space? Um, I believe because he was looking for me for like because I left for like a week, so he was asking my friends like where like have you heard from Sandra? Like, where is Sandra? And he could not reach your parents too. No, he didn't, he didn't call he my didn't parents. For that he even had my he phone. He didn't call my phone. You know, he was calling my friend's phone. So he was looking for where is Sandra. So you, I think he got, he was panic. He was panicking. And I, how would I say it? He, he thought maybe I was going to come out and say I was done with a marriage. I don't want it anymore. This is what he did. This is what he did. So he was, he was shocked. He, he wasn't, he was panicking. So wanted he wanted to give you first attack. Yes, <laughs> that's what he did. And, you know, which was a wrong move. So where, how, how, what, what, at what point did you now think to apologize to him, to um, beg him rather? I, I begged him like two weeks later after he did that, like I kept begging, I was like, okay, you know, let's work on our marriage. No marriage is perfect, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of stuff that was on the blogs and he was like, okay, okay, I'll give you back because he left the country. So he said, he's going to give me the cold back into the house. Right. And I got back into the house and I was um, doing everything he wanted me to do. I, I I even did a surprise welcome back from him, you know. And after that, when he came back, even when he was there, he was like, leave my house, leave my house. But I thought he was always telling me to leave his house every came back a day. But at that point, <laughs> you know, I was like, very used to it. So when he came back, um, I for a whole two weeks I was there before I finally left. I was doing everything he wanted me to do. I would cook. I left my business alone. And I was mm -hmm. cooking, doing everything with heavy pregnancy, bring the tray to him because that's what he wants because he's a traditional man, mm -hmm. you know. Uh -huh. So I did all of that. He said, no, I'm, I'm pretending. Oh. Uh, yeah. He okay. said, I'm pretending that I should just give me like another week. I'll just go back to the way I was. Wow. So um, I said, I'm not pretending. I'm doing what it is to take care of my marriage, to be in my marriage. He said, no. So one morning he woke me up and it was like, Sandra, leave my house. That was like the second time I came back. It was like, Sandra, leave me. I said, what happened? What did I do? He was like, he's going to take, he's going to destroy the whole bed. He's going to take out the blanket from me. This is a woman who is heavily pregnant on the bed, you know? And I was like, what did I do? You say, you think I'm joking? I, I would, like, you need to leave my house right now. You need to leave. You need to leave. Okay. And I said, okay, just pack small stuff and go for the weekend. That's what he told me. I said, yeah. what did I do? And at, at that point, I just thought to myself and I was like, this can't keep this can't keep happening every time. So I just mm. called one of my friends. I was like, come on, help me pack my things. So I packed all of my things mm. and I left the house. And that was and it. That was and it. that was it. That was it. Do you think there's anything you would have done further to have helped the marriage? Or you just got to the point where you're like, you know what, fuck it. Um, I, I felt you know, at the time, like they told me, like, um, he's 
siblings were telling me that I should keep, I should, when, whenever he's shouting at me, I should just keep quiet or maybe I should just go stay in another room and stuff like that. So when he's actually yelling and shouting at me for no reason, um, I'll, I'll be quiet. I won't say anything. Then it's like, I don't know you, Sandra. Leave my room. I cannot sleep in the same room with you. You have to leave and stay in another room. So not, no matter what I did, even if I'm telling him, challenging him, like, why are you doing this? Da, 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 you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. Even if I'm quiet, it's like, you're too quiet. You must oh. be planning something. So every action. Every, every action, yes. What, what was his family's role in this whole thing? Um, I believe the... Um, the family role, I, 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 I'm actually in good terms with, <laughs> I'm actually in good terms with his uncles, hmm. you know. Um, but his sisters, I don't understand. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe she thought maybe I was coming to the family to take over because she works for him. I don't know, you know, because they depend on him. So I don't understand the whole thing. Do you think it's about, do you think, I mean, have you ever sat down and say, what did really happen? Now say again, in parents and say they don't want me again. I've been a juju somebody do. Mm. What did really happen? Have you ever thought Yes, about yes, yes. I actually I was thinking it could be juju. It could be because the whole switch, the whole switch was like, was, okay. I couldn't explain it. The whole switch, even the fact that he didn't want to see his son. Uh. I begged him to see his son, you know. Hmm. He didn't want to see his son. I was like, what kind of thing is this? Still now? Seen? Yeah, still now. So he doesn't actually have a relationship with his son no. still now? Nope. Is he financially responsible? Nope. So he does not in any way, shape or form financially no, contribute? Not even a couple. And you said it was this man that came into your DMs, not the other way around. Yeah, he's the one that came into my DM. <laughs> when did the switch happen? The switch happened uh, when I hmm. found out that he was cheating. Oh, okay. And Oh, oh I'll dare you I get find it out. now. I'll dare How you. dare you hold me accountable? <laughs> yes. I'm putting you in my oh, house. Uh, yeah, he said, he said um, that I'm actually under, like I don't have, I'm homeless, that he picks yeah. me out from the gutter. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. so I, I understand yeah. a little bit more now. Mm. So that, that narcissism 101. Yes. So I like, you know, in the beginning, we mentioned that if people do a search on Google, mm. now the things where... Now some of the things, th th some of the things when they go see now the things will be like say maybe a trend mm -hmm. and they don't see other things. You are, you know, a woman who has great business acumen, who is really very successful yes. business wise, mm -hmm. who has invested a lot. Yes, mm -hmm. I would want us to have that conversation because to so many young girls out there, mm -hmm. you know, they can draw inspiration from you and say, even if you don't need anybody right. to be yes. able to Make achieve it. this mm -hmm. level of success. So let's talk about you know all of this on the side and still dealing with your businesses and building a successful um, business conglomerate from all. Yes. Yeah, so like I said, like I always channel like my energy, like in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the bad energy that I get, you know, in terms of dealing with that situation, I tend to like channel, uh, channel the energy to us, um, you know, creating and um, um, growing my business. You know, I, I focus on it, you know, 100% because I don't have any other thing to focus on, like mm -hmm. in terms of relationship and all that, you know, because there's nobody that I'm, I'm, I'm with or, you know, giving me a, you know, headache or whatever. So I challenge that, you know, um, energy and I challenge, uh, you know, the, the support, everything that I get around me into my, into my business. And I, I'm going to actually going to say this because, um, all the things I say that he did, he cannot sue me because it's, there's evidence to everything that I say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything I say. He can never sue me. Well, everything you've said about Everything him. I say is the truth. And I have evidence to back it up. Facts and evidence to back it up. So that's up to today. He can never sue me. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow. Smart woman. Okay. So still talking about being a smart woman. To every young lady <laughs> out, to every, to every young lady out there, you know, irrespective of what you are going through, and it might be easier for me to say mm. because I'm not dead that kind of situation. Yes. Mm. But the truth is, if they go by your experience, mm -hmm. they can actually, you know, still deal with that pain and bring out something really very, very beautiful yes. from mm. all that they are contending Make with. Yes. Out of a lemon. Mm. Yes. But, 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 but it's not always easy. Right. Yes, I say mm -hmm. it's not easy. It's very hard. The only reason why it was a bit easier for me was because I already had something 
going on for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, compared to a woman that don't have anything going on for herself. And you had your family as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Supportive Mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. So it was way easy for me. Um, You know, even starting from scratch, you know, a lot of women have to start from scratch. I didn't really have to start from scratch. A lot of women right now, like I said earlier, are going through, because on my radio show, I get a lot of messages like tons of them even before coming here today i've gotten like four or five that are going through one shit or the other in their marriages and the ones when you say their relationship and all that now what do you think is that one two three things that you're going to hold on to or do to get them out of a toxic relationship a toxic marriage or relationship that they know because the truth is Women know relationship don't need to go anywhere. Mm. We like to be in, de- in denial. denial. Yeah. They mm-hmm. just like to delulu yourself. Mm. Yes. <laughs> delulu, 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 delulu. Delulu. <laughs> it's not true, true. <laughs> just like to delulu yourself and, and lie to yourself. What's that thing that you can tell them to kind of like spark something in them to say, okay, get out of this. Okay, so usually I used to tell, like, what I tell women that come to my DM, and it's like, I was like, always look at the, okay, weigh the good and the bad. So if the bad is more than the good, it's time for you to go. Mm. It's time for you to leave. Have a list. Yes. Mm. You know, because if if you're, um, because a lot of, you know, women, they're like, oh, he does this for me, he does that for me, but is it after beating you? Mm. Mm. Giving you a black eye? Mm. Can he do that for you if you're dead? Exactly. Because some women, some men, they beat mm-hmm. up their wives and whatnot, then they compensate them with a new car. Mm-hmm. Some, people, mm-hmm. you some people are not even getting anything at all. I know, they also yes. got new <laughs> designer glasses to cover the I black swear, patch. They fell yes. down. They also got new down. <laughs> anything that actually makes me mm. upset that when a woman is violated, mm. some people will say, what she, well, you must, she must have done something. something. I know some men, because they will come home either drunk or something or whatever, they have something in the back of mind or maybe somebody ins- like, um, maybe insulted an- them. Insulted them. them anger. Yes. Then they put it on their wife. Yeah. Transferred aggression. Yeah, transferred aggression to their wife. The wife must not have done anything. It was down. never love in the first place because mm-hmm. the truth is if you love somebody, if you cherish that person, that person is like your whole life. You can't touch that person. Mm-hmm. Whether you're dating that person, you're married to that person, Listen. you can't. Because you, if you, which is what I tell a lot of ladies, the ones that I can't tell, talk to, when a man treats you as an extension of himself, that is when you know that man is for you. Yes. Mm. If he does not treat you as an extension of himself, then you are just fooling yourself. If he treats you like something he can cut off any time, then you're nothing to him. Mm. Now, um, um, thank you for saying that also, because there was a lady that reached out and said, you know, back to something that you said, that you prefer your husband to tell you, um, the person, if 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 he had told you, okay, mm-hmm. these are the people I'm messing with, mm-hmm. or rather you choose them, if it makes sense. Now, there was a lady that reported to me on, on the radio show, and was like, I think I've mentioned it here before, I can't remember, that said um, that um, his husband, her husband rather, impregnated the younger sister. I mean, which I frowned at. Do you know what I mean? Because her husband, her, yes, so her, husband. her younger Pregnant sister. Her, her younger, younger sister. I would say, handed it on radio recently. Oh. Her younger sister. And that, that she does not know what to do, that she wants to leave the marriage. And I said, look, personally, if he had done it with some other person, it's okay, whatever. It's a normal thing. Mm-hmm. But your sister, it means the respect was not even there. But I am not going to give you the reply. And this is what I told her. I'm going to call you on air on Niger FM. And then I went on radio that day. Before I went on, air, on on radio and I called her, I'm about to call you on air. She said, say, Organi, do not call me. If you call me, if I talk to you, people go no send me they follow you talk. Mm. Just talk the story and let people call and advise me. Mm. Sandra. Okay. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> 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 but I tell you what I hear that day. I said the story Chukudi, for our backyard. And I said, and I asked question, women, what is the worst that can happen in your marriage that will make you leave your husband? Baba. 99.9% say they know they go anywhere. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. Ask her team this in what they tell you. She was there. I think that's why a lot of men have the audacity to do Exactly a lot. my point. <laughs> hey, thank you. You know where I was going. 
This is where a lot of men have the audacity. I know. Go lost him. Go go. You know they go. Where are you going? Where are you going? Just walk. You know they go anywhere. Which is why I tell a lot of women. Get vex money. Yes. Money. Yep. Yes. Yep. Mm. Keep your vex money. Have a back door open. Mm -hmm. Don't look to use it. Mm. But have a back door open so that one. Now let me let me break something down. If I'm dating BB, yeah, and then I do something to BB, I piss BB off, and then BB's BB knows she's not going anywhere. I don't like this thing that you do. I don't like it. Stop it. Stop it. Tomorrow, chances are that I'm going to repeat it Definitely. because she's there. Mm -hmm. But if I dwam, which goes back to what I'm saying, if you cannot stay alone, don't get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm saying. If a man is coming into your life, he's not coming to make you happy. He's coming to add to the happiness yes. that you have of yourself exactly. already. Mm. When he's not there, you are still happy. And I do that thing to Bibi. And then Bibi says, do you know what, bruv? I'm just going to leave you for, for a while. Do you get me? Uh, when you're okay, I'm going to come back. Hey, baby, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. When I know you're sorry, I'm going to come. And she leaves. When I know the value she adds in my life and she comes back, why do you think I want to repeat that thing again? I don't want to repeat mm. it again. I wouldn't want to repeat it again. Which is why I also said, don't get into a relationship when you have a need. I think also a lot of women um, base their happiness on the man. They feel like the man is happi happiness. He can only you add know? to your happiness. I don't necessarily think that, you know. I think that what happens is the longer you're in a relationship for, especially women, women are nurturers by nature, right? So you pour. You pour into your relationship. You pour into and your man. And it's beautiful. I and like to is. have my woman pour emotions and stuff at me. But I love it. But you'll be able to exist without the man. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Of course you're existing without the man. But when you think about how much you have invested in that relationship, the problem that is where the problem lies makes it a lot more it difficult lot more harder to reach to walk that decision away. which is why i always say our second name every woman's second name every man's second name should be on to the next mm. yes mm -hmm. that should be your second that's why i'm quick but to if move that's your on. second name how are you going to try and exhaust all options to make now, let me tell you something in work let me tell you something i hate talking about my personal stuff okay. but the truth is i've been through hell when it comes to women in my life I've been through shit. It's right now that I'm happy. Aww. Like I'm finally at Aww. peace. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't talk I'm during university dating. Get yeah, don't cheat on me. I catch him. <laughs> what do you tell me? I'm not cheating on you. I'm cheating on him with you. <laughs> so you shouldn't even be complaining. I don't don't complain. be mad. So you were the side nigga. I was the side nigga. I was the side chick. <laughs> <laughs> but what did I do? You see, which is something I love about God for me. I never brood about anything. It don't happen. On to the next. I move. Mm. Chances, 199% are that you are going to brood over that thing and you're going to let it weigh you down and you're going to let it affect. I always believe in love. I believe in relationships. I love the law. I love love. I know that there are people that can love you and love you for real mm -hmm. and not want anything from you yeah. but your time, attention, and care. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? I kept believing, which is why I tell BB all the time, what you give your energy to is what you give life to. Mm -hmm. If you keep thinking that, oh, this is not going to work, it will not work. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you keep thinking, even in your situation, you are saying that, like, ah, can you, it's not working. But you still believe that it's going to work. Trust me, the universe, the universe not get more, the yes. universe that, it comes around for your good, which is why even the Bible says all things work to them that believe. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that it's going to work. If you don't believe it's not going to work. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry I'm going into the Bible and digressing a bit. It's energy. Ladies, men, it's energy. Don't believe in that man that is beating you. Uh, where will I go with these two children? Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> believe that as you they live there, everything will go well. Yes. Mm. Even when you're not seeing it. The woman with issue of blood. She was going for prayers. It wasn't healing. The blood was flowing. If you have not gotten to the point where you are tired yourself and angry, you will not get your deliverance. She got to the point where she'd be like, waiting, you don't do. You know what? 
if I touch the hem of this man's garment, I'm going to be okay. okay. When yeah. she said that, that was when she got her healing. Mm -hmm. But the healing had not cocked yet. It never covered yet. The covering was her touching. Now, her energy had emitted out already to the universe. The universe had heard everything she said. I was walking in her favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when she touched the guy, everything dried up. Mm -hmm. Then when the guy thought back, sir, somebody touched touch me. me. Then begin to say, but by everybody they touch, he said no. He said no. He said no. I'm, go I'm going to direct another thing to it. He said no. This one touched touch me, me differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can't turn to Ram. He want to touch me, Abi. Your healing is whole. Let me tell you that you can do that, mm -hmm. so that you understand that you can do that. Let me tell you. Let me make it, uh, uh, explain to you. What's the material? No, in fact, let me leave us. Don't. Have you not noticed? Now, energy, our energy that we give, that you use to give life, energy is waiting for your command. Mm -hmm. Your command is your thought. What you command through your thought is what your energy brings to you. Whether you like it or not, I don't care. Whatever you call it, you call it faith, is your energy. Now, that your energy is radiating all through you, blah, you just they go mm -hmm. like matrix going up and down. What your thought is what it directs to beam. And once it hits your thoughts, what you're thinking of, it gives life. So that it gives breath to that thing and yeah. that thing comes to pass. Why do you think that? If you stand like this face here, somebody channeling your whole energy, they stare at you. Your own energy is going to receive information that somebody is staring at you. And then when yes. you turn, that yes. person is so really staring, staring at, at you. you. Yeah. Yes. That is energy. Yeah. She channeled her energy to believe that I'm going to receive healing. So when she touched, that energy, when she don't channel, now you hammer Jesus Christ. And the guy take no see. So you women out there, mm. believe that no matter what that man is doing for you, there are a lot of dickheads that are men out there. There are a lot of narcissist men. There are plenty of work. I know some that are stupid. <laughs> but, but no, I'm going to say this. Is a man can have more than one woman. It's natural. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But don't insult the woman you're with. Mm. With it. Baba, I get one or two friends where they carry. You know one. He go carry the woman go in house. The house where you keep, for, where you and your wife marry. You're not only disrespecting your wife. You're not only disrespecting your marriage. You're not only disrespecting your children. You're disrespecting yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. The woman go no say another woman there, day. And she's okay with it. And some will want to know the woman so that they are okay. There are a lot of that I know that want to know the woman. Because they have finally come to the understanding that this is who a man is. Mm -hmm. Okay, make I just know the woman. Make peace there. Yes. But some are so stupid to make the... <laughs> Baba, hey, don't take this thing in personal. No verse, no verse. No verse. Holy, holy. It. <laughs> a personal all I'm question. Saying is, mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, women, understand that you have power. Mm -hmm. Don't let any man keep you down. See Sandra here. She's gone through the shittest of shit. <laughs> but I believe that Sandra, I stand corrected, where she is now, if she had not gone through all those things, she would not be where she is. Am I lying? Mm -hmm. You're saying the truth. But because of saying she channeled out her energy, that inner, why do you think they call it inner chi? Yes. Because she channeled that inner chi of inside of her into that thing. That's why it works. So channel your inner chi into making things work. If it doesn't, if Baba, if you not work for you, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. true, true. If you don't see it, you're not gonna get it. True. Let me ask, eh, given your experience, do you do has the concept or has the concept of love changed for you? Given your experience, that's number one. Then number two, are you still open <laughs> to you know finding love, getting get married. married again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I saw that she has found love sometime <laughs> in January. Love, right? love. I saw, oh. I, saw that, I, I saw in the blog in January. Oh my god! That you know, Sandra. <laughs> so, no, no, how they wrote love. it in the blog? I remember clearly because my problem with the blogs is, you see, um, my, my 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 problem with our wonderful bloggers is that the tend to tie a popular person that you're tied with to ride with you. Mm. Ubi Franklin's ex, ex. Mm -hmm. or Ubi Franklin's baby mama yeah. finds love again. again. <laughs> it was in January. Love. You saw it, I right? Saw it. Actually, March. 
it was so right, I, I saw it in January. January. I saw it in January. I saw it in January. 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 Yes. 2023. Okay, yeah, okay. January 2023. Same headline. That you okay, found. Wow. Franklin's baby wow. mama finds love again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that, now, now two second love, he find. I become move on to that one call again. You know, like I said, if anything doesn't serve me any purpose, I leave. Oh, you find the love through through. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't. It, I, I would say like you know, I'm the kind of person that um, you know, I wouldn't Gym. say I love easily, but. You love a girl. I'm a lover girl. You love yeah. easily. That's what it means. Oh, you love her. I don't I believe in love. Yes, no. Uh-huh. I love love. Yes, I love love. I love too. love. You know, but you know, some things we can't control. We have yeah. to let go. So that's just what it so is. So you found love in January. Yes, I did. Actually, it was December and came out January. December 2020. Is he a Lagos guy? Yeah. <laughs> because Lagos guys love. No, so it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not Nigerian base, I would say. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not Nigerian Nigerian so, what now sports they love? Isawa. <laughs> like a goosey we done there for two weeks. No, actually, we have mutual understanding and we decided to part ways. Just what? Way. Did you part ways or he did? We decided to part ways. Sandra, did you uh, find out something? Now, now I know I'm asking these questions. Okay. You know, now, when, meca- when Madman kill your papa, if it's a mechanic, you go run. Or anybody when we're black. Anyway, we're black, he go run. <laughs> Did you see something that gave you PTSD? That yes, made you wrong? I would say that. Yeah, I saw something that gave me PTSD and decided just not to. So you learned from experience. Yes, I learned from mm. experience. So I, I look out for a lot of things now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, when, I'm, when I get into a relationship, um, I always focus on making sure that man is kind. Mm. That's mm. very important. Yeah, yeah. You know, because if you are... For instance, there's, there are times that you can, like, in my past relationship, I'll be crying, man. I'll be, give you a bucket and you cry your eyes out, you understand? But it's, you know, but being with somebody who is kind mm. and, you kind. know, in, in there for you emotionally, it's very, very important. And those are the things I didn't look out for mm. before. Mm. But now I'm looking into it. The and person that thinks about your emotions, emotions at yes. any point Young in time. Young people, listen, listen, yes. look out for this thing. It's not every time pizza. Yeah. Ice cream, <laughs> shawarma. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the truth, though. Yes. Pizza anymore. No, it's not every time. Pizza, <laughs> shawarma. Oh, he gave me, he gave me, he gave me. It's mm. kindness. Not be waiting. You even eat. Yes. It's not. Hey, hey. You then cry. Pass the time. He's going give you buckets. Yes. Mm. You'll cry, fuller. Yeah. I will be here with you. You'll yeah. cry. You know, you, you know, you know, Sandra said something. Look out for somebody that thinks about your emotions, yeah. yes. that puts you first emotionally. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that person didn't put you first emotionally and otherwise. Mm, I would say no, no. So you're not Because it's not about that- me now. I'm being selfish to myself. Like I have yeah. to- Bye-bye, they're like- good sometime. Oh. Yes, True. yes. You know. Now, you know, what did you not find in March? You found another one too in March. No, it's the same person in March. When oh. did that relationship end? You go leave, you can't come back. <laughs> we had a Maybe. break and we came back. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, we had a break. They had we... January break. Sandra, you said like you trouble. You came said, back you said you get trouble, you get problem. No, no, because Sandra, you get problem. No, no. You said she'd be love again now. No, you know, sometimes you have to take a break to actually realize what you, you know, what you no, want. I go to that. This ain't you know what more. It, was, it was just a short break. It was like for one month. <laughs> what? Then <laughs> resumed yeah, after the break. Boy, you know now. What? What? Okay. So, so let me also ask, do you think that at this point now and giving, looking back now, do you think if you're involved with anybody, you would want to make it public? Mm. No, hell no. Mm-hmm. Hey? No more. No more, because, you know, people, I I believe in, like you said, energy, because people online, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, they're kind of like, kind of like infested, like, I know, I would say invested in your uh, relationship. Relationship. I say, Mm -hmm. this one will go last. You know, when people kind of like different eyes are in your relationship, Mm -hmm. energy, you know, it's not going to go the way you want Mm -hmm. it. People can't ruin what they don't know. Yes, people Mm -hmm. can't ruin what they don't know. But can people that don't know you ruin what you have? Yes. Ah, Yes. You know, know a lot of things can be said Hmm. online Hmm. and your partner Mm -hmm. can read it and it can affect your relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so that kind of thing, you want to leave it out on the public eye. Even when your partner does not read it. Yes. Let me explain something. Energy is energy. But let me ask you, if God does not need your money, is your praises that he needs. What does devil need? Mm. Complain. Have you ever asked yourself that? Who do you think on CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC, all of them? There's a corporation that owns them. Why do you think each time you go there, 
you come out with negative energies. Yeah. There's a reason why all these things happen. Now, whether you know it or you don't, the energy they are putting out will come to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As as person they call him Chukode. Chukode means God's God day. Mm-hmm. I call you Chukode. 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 It's an affirmation of to you that whatever happens, Chukode. When this one talk, this one, this one talk, this one, this one talk, it's an energy that is going up. Yeah. It creates it. It hits on you. Whether you like it or not. Why why do they think say they, they tell you say, well, if they pre appearance they pray, say if you know, if you know, I wouldn't need to make your clothes, no, if you not collect if you not drag trouble, make your clothes not drag trouble for you. Your clothes, you don't know what's in your cloth they drag. Your cloth is the energy that is coming from outside. Well, you get the ones when you no know, the social media waste this point now. Waste this point. You know, yes. Because see, like Tom said. My brother, what do people not know? Make They're not his point. I think it's, it would be like if there's any need of um, amendments, it would be easier if it's off social media. Good. Mm. You know? Yeah. And you know what? You I know? think that's also the same reason why they say that in a relationship, in a marriage, you don't talk to anybody but your partner but no. about the problem. Wow. Yes. As long mm. as it's not abusive. Yes. Mm. So if there's a misunderstanding, you guys resolve it within yourselves because the minute that you seek outside counsel, so, yes. you have other... Different opinions. Exactly. Yeah, it's different. Yes. Yeah. So yourself now, as a divorcee, as a mother... I'm not yet divorced, though. Okay, but yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. you're in the process. Yes, in the process, yeah. Okay, but as a single woman, yes. what is the dating pool like now for you? With your <laughs> newfound knowledge, with your children, and with your you know, previous experiences within marriage? Well, right now, I would say it's actually you know, fun right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it's fun because I, I get to like explore, like, you know... I have different options. When you I know? Hear explore my brother, I don't think they come my mind. She <laughs> 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 Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yes. I, so, so are you are you, are you dating now, or are you open <laughs> to dating, or you're searching? What are the things that you're looking out for in the man that you? I'm actually dating right now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you're you're dating, and this person checks all your box, ticks all your boxes. Yes. For now. For, for now. now. For so now. Far, so far, so good. Yes, for now. Is and and I mean I, I don't want to probe further, but is this person how many kids you have? I have four. Four kids. Is this person looking at just being with you or like you guys just enjoying your company together or taking it further than that? No, actually we're enjoying our company and um there's not gonna be any because I already made my terms clear. No children, no marriage. Mm. Just okay. partnership. You see this thing you just said? I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Do you think the marriage is needed for every woman? No. Because um, you can be, I always say like marriage is just nothing but a piece of paper and make it legal and whatnot, mm. you know. Um, but if you're in partnership with somebody, um, I prefer being in partnership with somebody. So like, like, especially when like down the line, maybe years to come, it'd be easier to part ways. You understand than marriage where you have to go through courts and all these things, you know, and everything else, especially if you got, got married in a court, you know. So I, I do believe that who a person I'm dating right now, I'm not looking at marriage anyway, anyhow, but partnership for a long time. That's just mm-hmm. it. Is he looking at marriage? Uh, I don't think so. I don't. I well, I don't know his mind. You know, because I I stayed in my terms. Does he have kids as well? Yes, he does. Or oh, is he married? No. But is it possible for your terms and conditions to change? Is it possible? You, have you to, understand? I mean, you. He, he, that's how he's gonna give it to you. He doesn't. He doesn't. Is it possible? Do you think it's possible that mm. you know you can be with somebody for some time? This is what we have agreed. But again, it if you go and look, say ah, I mean, let's I look at Osi men now. Oh, see, my eyes go scorer in uh, Syria. <laughs> Darling of Napoli. This season, they said they won't give a long-term contract. Baba never signed. Madrid is calling. Saudi Arabia is there. Even Chelsea are saying that in January, he can Even join Even you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it is well with my you. But do you, think, do, you think that, do you think that in the course of, you know, your relationship with this person, it's possible you just say, see, let's, let's just even give it a try. If two people agree, no, because of trauma, 
Mm. Yes, trauma. But once you heal, because trauma can be healed. Yes, but you're always going to have PTSD. <sighs> but, do you, but, but, but do you know why I kind of agree with Sandra? See, eh? I think marriage, relationships that are agreement. Marriage is beautiful, very beautiful if you find the right person. Trust me, if you have the right person, yeah, you want to stay you want to stay married to them forever. You come back to this earth 1,000 times, want to get married to them forever. But most times, it's safer to just be with that person. No titles. Mm. When I just date together, the person respects your emotions, you respect that person's emotions, you personally look at like Oprah. Oprah exactly, that's a great years. example. Yes. Yes. She's not married. She's not married to him. She's not married to him. But guess what? They respect yes, each other. Their emotional intelligence is 100. Mm. Yes. You understand? How many marriage day for Bible? Only one we know. <laughs> you get the point now. But now just say, okay, you date together, you date together. Joseph, ever marry Marina. now. Who, where do you see the marriage? Who MCM? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> their, their parents don't know. <laughs> 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 then there was the one at Kana. There was the one at Kana in Dali. No, 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 there's only that Kana. Oh, now nah, I know. You, you, Joseph Mary Mary. Even for that one, why finish? <laughs> <laughs> now they say, you, so nothing is perfect. So do you understand? Nothing is perfect. Yes. So the thing is, I think that when you find somebody you exchange spirits with, your energy goes with that person. You're, you're always putting that person ahead of you. That person is putting you ahead of them, then that person is the person for you. The marriage is beautiful, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always have to be marriage. Mm -hmm. And I think why I say this thing is, a lot of ladies are putting marriage first, which is what is making a lot of guys use them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Guys go do traditional marriage because of marriage. Yes. Guys go do introduction just because of they want wipe right. you. Yes. And once or they, they won't do, get something from you. They won't you. get something from you. Mm -hmm. And once they do that, they, they are, are gone. gone. So don't always put marriage first. If marriage comes, just like Adi Kabasa said, it's like success. Treat it as an experience, not a goal. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Let it be an experience. Relationship, ah, do I have a good relationship with this person? Are we living together? Yes, we're living together. We have kids together, yes. Is he being a good father to the kids? Yes. Is he being a good, is, is, is he being a good partner to me? Mar okay. Marriage, husband and wife day. Rel um, relationship, uh, partnership, relationship. Husband and a partner, both of them. City. What does a what does marriage do? Oh, he's been a good husband. He's been a good partner to me. He's been a good father to the kids. This one, he's been a good partner to me. He's been a good father to the kids. What's in difference, Jinta? There's an extra level like of so. commitment. Tag. No, yeah, tag, I don't yes. think it's just tag though. I think that there is an extra level of commitment that comes with marriage. Like there Ring. is a finality. So well, there's supposed yeah. to be a finality. Depending with on how you see it. Depending on your perception. Though, I agree. True, true, right? I agree. There's yeah. supposed to be like a, okay, this is it. This is my partner. We're going to rough it out no matter yeah. how rough it gets. No back door. No back door. We in the Catholic Church, it's a sacrament, <laughs> matrimony. <laughs> but no, back to it technically, that's what it's supposed to be, right? And also, I think with marriage, I think we also need to acknowledge the fact that it is indeed an institution, right? And it provides more structure, structure for finances, properties, children also. So let's not pretend that marriage is just irrelevant and there's no, no reason not why. No, I mean, it's you beautiful. Know, it's not Very the beautiful. same. And partnerships are beautiful too, but they are not the same. But, mm. not the same but you should go for the one that serves you. Exactly. Which is what I'm saying. Marriage, is, marriage, you can't put them on the same level. Mm -hmm. But the one that serves you right is the one you should mm. go for. I mean, we so. said that you were going to learn a lot and we're very confident that you have, mm. you know, first, all those people who go on right about person say ex friend, ex, no, put some respect on her name. Yeah. Serial entrepreneur, yeah. business mogul. Mm -hmm. Call her name. Mm -hmm. Call her name. Like, so <laughs> and, about. We, we understand that because of certain things that you know. Now that one you go wrong with, but do your research. Mm -hmm. Now person waste a big book. Yeah. Now person when they successful for business. So please, Papa, you know what it mean? Blood. You know, you, mm -hmm. you know what it mean to work bank for work for Bank of America. Before I open my account, under bank the of age America. of twenty. <laughs> yeah, but before I open my account, Bank of America, I know the cash stress. Why I go through? Fingerprints with FBI. You have to go through like a fingerprinting with FBI. Make sure that you're. You have no criminal um, history and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So yeah. put some respect on her name, not uh, yeah. ex friend. No, put yeah. some respect. Do your research. Number one. Number two. When I don't let them hear. Oh, no matter the situation, you can always, you can always bounce back. Mm -hmm. Take the lessons and yes. do well to live your life. I mean, if she had gone with the notion of oh, hey, they <laughs> say what society say. Look at me. Hey, see that. I'm very sure that if you come to her now first. If you don't have a business 
proposal. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation will not go anywhere. <laughs> you understand? This is not pizza, shawarma, ice cream <laughs> level. You must bring value. Right. Number three, please, family, make you understand, say, you know, they provide stability and support. Yeah. In situations where people are faced with difficulty, try as much as you can to be there for them. We're not saying that people should not be responsible and accountable, but be there to give them the support. Not be a... Uh, me too, I suffered in my husband's house. No competition. Anything you are doing there is a lesson. No. <laughs> give them the support. No be competition. Then finally, for every young girl out there, keep it in mind that your priority. Yes. Prioritize mm -hmm. your interest. Be selfish with it. Yes. Yes. Be, selfish. Selfish. Again. Be, Be selfish. Be selfish with it. Yes. Yes. Even as a man too, does the person think about you? Will the person be in in in, the, in a situation where you have where you, where you are at your worst, will the person still be kind? Mm. And this yes. is not an excuse for bad behavior. Where mm. you say, "Take me as I am." I am my zodiac sign. I am, I am, I am, I am Scorpio. <laughs> I, I am Scorpio. I am Scorpio. That's why I'm, that's why I'm acting like a scorpion. Aries <laughs> are emotional. <laughs> Stop it. Behave yourself, and you understand. See, be open to love. Mm -hmm. Nothing sweet past love. love. Yes. Yes. You don't. You don't say stream love. <laughs> <laughs> My guy is talking from experience. No, speak no. it. You don't say real love. The one way you no go feel explain. It's a gift. <laughs> the one way they give you peace of mind. Peace of mind the is very say, important. Even if everything, the vicissitudes of life, uh -uh. they against mm -hmm. you. Uh -uh. You go no say somebody they will go give you comfort. Okay. Be open to love. <laughs> and by the way, Bibi, Bibi asked me yesterday. It's Bibi who sent me WhatsApp yesterday. Yeah. So what are you trying to say? No, do you know what happened? I was listening to you on radio and there was this crazy story about this pastor who went and he got a, he married a girl and the girl was going up and down different hotels. She was traveling, flying. She was a city girl married to a pastor. It was wild. So Neruna said something. Neruna was like, you know, you loved her. Something along the lines of you loved her, da, da, da. But it takes more than love to make a marriage work. So I messaged him. I said, okay, so what does it take to make a marriage work then? Love is not enough. Love yeah, is love not is enough. enough. So what is no, enough? So what makes enough. it enough? Love is not enough. That love all the things that you have to put into consideration because the truth is love is going to fail you one day. Truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It's going to fill you one day. So Sandra, you former Ihua, <laughs> alumna of University of Massachusetts. Thank you oh, so much. Remind me about our trip. We're going to Cape Town. Oh yeah. February yeah, 11th to 17th, 2024. We're going to Cape Town. See, eh, I, want to, see. I want to beg you. I want to beg you. Take advantage of this opportunity. People in the South Africa don't tell us how they come. Well, a lot of packages, aside from seeing, you know, very great um, sites, it's also important that you are part of that live, mm -hmm. honest bunch uh, session that we're going to also have in Cape Town, South Africa. All and of you know, us. You're and you, see all of us and you know, And you know something about South Africa. I'm talking about our men. Are you sure? 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 Bye. <laughs> and by the way, I want to say shout out to Tinder Nuts for always posting us. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tinder. All the blogs that are giving us free advert. Mm -hmm. Shout out, <laughs> to, shout you. out exactly. to you guys. Shout out to all of you. So, um, anyways, <laughs> thank you for listening. I want to say thank you to um, Sandra Hua for coming. Uh, the business mogul. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Sandra uh, for coming. And then we hope that, like Osama Terry said, we hope that you've learned something. And to the cottets. <laughs> oh my God. Osama <laughs> Do the justice. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. <laughs>